Bowl. BYU and Cal, we'll see you back here at halftime. Enjoy the first half. Welcome everyone to Las Vegas where the bright lights of the strip are even more spectacular on ESPN HD. Tonight it's the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. The offenses of Cal and BYU have feasted on opponents all year. Turning defensive coordinators blue in the face. It'll be a blue Christmas for one of these teams. BYU must stop the dynamic duo of Marshawn Lynch and Justin Forsett. Cal's running backs have combined for more than 2,000 yards. Cal must contend with the right arm of John Beck. He's the leader of the prolific Cougar passing attack. ESPN's Bowl Road Trip continues tonight in Las Vegas. Welcome everyone to Sam Boyd Stadium on the outskirts of Las Vegas, Nevada. This stadium sold out for the first time in the 14 year history of the Las Vegas Bowl as the BYU Cougars with nearly 30,000 fans in house take on the Golden Bears of the University of California. It's an annual matchup of the Mountain West Conference against the Pac-10. Good evening everybody and happy holidays. I'm Sean McDonough along with Mike Godfrey. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined by Alex Flanagan in just a moment. And if you like offensive football, we should have an early holiday treat for you. These are two high scoring clubs, each averaging right around 33 points per game. They do it with different styles. BYU, of course, long known as a great passing attack. And they're number eight in the country this year, Mike, in passing offense. Sean, a good matchup. BYU is going to spread Cal's defense out all over the football field. John Beck is a very good quarterback. Thrown for 24 touchdown passes. Todd Watkins is a receiver you watch tonight. He's outstanding. And then Curtis Brown, the back. 44 receptions out of the backfield, also a thousand yard rusher. They use a spread attack employed by Texas Tech in recent years. That was the offense that gave Cal so many problems last year and its bowl loss to the Red Raiders. Cal this year, seven and four. They've had some issues at quarterback, so they've leaned heavily on the run. In fact, they're 10th in the country in total rushing. This is a good running football team. Now, BYU better stop this running game or it's going to be a long night. Cal's offensive line very nasty very tough Marshall Sean Lynch the running back is exceptional he's fast he's powerful Justin Forsett a change of pace guy that will come into the football game a patient runner they have had issues at quarterback this season Steve Levy will start tonight making his second career start he started the regular season finale against Stanford and led them to the win in their big game over their arch rival but he'll be in the spotlight again tonight the reason he starts he doesn't make mistakes they run the football he'll be asked to throw the football he doesn't make mistakes BYU and Cal it should be a very entertaining football game we're delighted to have you with us we'll have the opening kickoff in just a moment. Good evening and welcome to the 2005 Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. We are proud to be back as title sponsors of this event and look forward to an exciting matchup between the BYU Cougars and Cal Bears. Tonight's game is being brought to you in high definition and as a manufacturer of Pure Vision plasma displays, Pioneer is dedicated to providing the truest HD home theater experience. And from everyone at Pioneer Electronics, happy holidays and enjoy the game. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? It all starts with a Pioneer Plasma Display, offering incredibly high contrast for a nearly 3D picture. Pure vision. Only 
from Pioneer. Welcome back to Las Vegas. BYU in a bowl game for the first time since 2001 when they lost to Louisville in the Liberty Bowl. Cal in one of the best eras in school history in a bowl game now for the third year in a row. Led by coach Jeff Tedford. He's with Alex Flanagan. Coach, your quarterback Steve Levy playing in only his second game, starting in only his second game. How does that affect your play calling? It really doesn't. Uh, he's had a great week, a couple weeks of bowl preparation. He's got a lot of confidence. Uh, he's a very tough young man, great competitor. Our team's really rallied around him. On the other side of the ball, BYU's offense, one of the best passing offenses in the nation, John Beck going crazy in terms of throwing. What do you do to contain BYU's passing offense? Well, I don't know if you're ever going to stop him. Uh, they're very well coached, and he does a great job. But we just have to eliminate the big play, keep everything in front of us. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. Jeff Tedford's done one of the great coaching jobs in the country in recent years. He took over a Cal program that had won 13 games combined in the four years prior to his arrival. They've won 32 in his four seasons, at least seven wins in each. And... They would have been in a bowl game in all four of his seasons, but he inherited a program dealing with probation when they were not eligible to go after his first season in Berkeley. Cal won the toss and will receive the opening kickoff. BYU about a five hour drive from its campus in Provo, Utah. There is a Mormon population of about 130,000 in the metropolitan Las Vegas area and most reports we've heard, Mike, is that they have sold about 30,000 of the 40,000 tickets in this stadium. It'll be almost like a home game for BYU here tonight. And Sean, this is a great crowd. They're excited. This is a great football game because you have a passing football team at BYU. Jeff Tedford, you talked about him. He is running the football better than uh, most teams. He's got a very young team, Bronco Mendenhall on the other side. I mean, this is a good matchup. Bronco Mendenhall, 39 years old. He could certainly pass for younger than that. First year as the head coach at BYU. He was the defensive coordinator under Gary Croton during a period in which BYU struggled on the field, three straight losing seasons, and off the field. And that was perhaps a larger problem given the mission of Brigham Young University, the honor code, the standard to which students and student athletes are expected to behave. Some of the things that went on there unacceptable led to the dismissal of Croton and the promotion to head coach of Bronco Mendenhall. Jared McLaughlin will kick off for the Cougars. Marcus O'Keefe is number two. Marshawn Lynch, number 10, back deep for the Golden Bears. And the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl is underway with a kickoff out of bounds. So it'll be great field position to begin for the Golden Bears. They'll take the ball at the 35-yard line. Conference USA officials tonight. Out of bounds, untouched. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. Let's take a look at the California starting lineup on offense. An outstanding line, particularly on the right side. Marvin Phillip is an All American center. Ryan O'Callaghan voted the best offensive lineman in the Pac 10 by the other players in the conference. Young wide receivers in Jackson and Jordan, and Lynch will be spelled by Forsett in the backfield. Swing pass by Levy. Out to Marshawn Lynch. And a big gainer for Cal on the first play from scrimmage. All the way to the 43-yard line of BYU. That's a 22-yard gain. For the Cougars defensively, front three of Maddox, Payongo, and Fiula. Lutger Grote, Jensen, and Walkenhorst are the veteran linebackers. They call Jensen the general. He's the leader of the group. And in the 3-3-5 alignment, Five members of the secondary, including Nate Solberg, who's battled through two broken arms this year. He's broken each arm the course of the season. He's back in to play tonight. Now it's Robert Jordan on the near side. 
So Mike perhaps surprised Cal leading heavily on the run most of the year comes out throwing with the relatively new starter Steve Levy. This is smart oh Sean because you figure BYU is going to load up against the run you got safe throws for Steve Levy to give off to a good start. Levy. From Cornwall New York he went to high school across the state border in New Jersey. At Don Bosco Prep, a traditional Jersey high school football power. Now to the run, and it's Lynch inside the 30 yard line. David Tafuna made the tackle. It's a gain of nine for Lynch. Levy's high school about 30 miles from his home in Cornwall, New York. They list him at 6 1. He admitted that might even be a little on the generous side, and that's one reason why he was not particularly. Highly recruited out of high school. Impressive start so far for Cal in just more than 30 seconds. They've marched to the BYU 28 yard line. A handoff to Robert Jordan through a good hole, and he's down to the 21 yard line, tackled by Justin Robinson. There's always the idea that Pac 10 team's going to come out here and not be ready to play. But Cal looks like their preparation all week, the coaches I talked to, the players, they are focused. UCLA came here last year as the Pac-10 representative. Nearly a two touchdown favorite, lost by 12 to Wyoming. Marshawn Lynch dancing and he did not get the first down. Driven back by Paul Walkenhorst. And it'll be third down and about a yard for the Golden Bears a minute and a half into a scoreless game. And BYU without their two top defensive linemen. So they, they have a defense that needs somebody to step up the linebacker position to st stop this running game. Cal. Bronco Mendenhall does double as the defensive coordinator. He said that dual role is harder than he imagined it would be, but he enjoys it and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Third down and short. And it's the fullback Chris Mandarino for a first down. One of the veteran leaders of this Cal team, a fifth-year senior who came to Cal as a walk-on and wound up being a starter in virtually every game, coached by Jeff Tedford in his four years as the head man in Berkeley. When he was coming out of high school, Everybody told him he was too small to be a linebacker, too slow to be a running back, but here he is. And the drive continues. Levy a quick throw. He's sharp early. It's Robert Jordan again. And a late shove out of bounds and a flag. That was really dumb on the part of Justin Robinson. The play went to the 12-yard line, and the penalty will get them down near the six. Get frustrated early here, BYU. Just not a smart play here. The final push by Robinson. Sean, this is the what you want to do when you're playing a BYU football team. Keep the ball. Keep their offense on the sideline. Long drives. Finish them off. First down. And we spoke with Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator for Cal, about stopping this BYU offense that closely resembles the Texas Tech offense that annihilated Cal in the bowl game last year. He said, we're not going to change much. We're just going to lean on Coach Tedford in the offense to stay on the field longer, keep BYU off the field. This drive started at the Cal 35. They're at the BYU 6. It looked like the Cougars were offside. Now Sean Lynch drives down near the two-yard line. And there is a flag. Looked like the Cougars were prematurely across the line. Gil Gelbke of Conference USA, the referee. Up, defense. Half the distance to the goal. It remains first down. Looked like it was Quinn Gooch. Gil did not give the number, but it looked like. Quinn Gooch, a defensive back, it was up there in a blitz mode, offside. Gooch comes from the outside, too fast. Tried to time up the snap. The first and goal for the Golden Bears from the three. Cal seven and four in the regular season. 
Four and four in the Pac-10. Lynch, that was easy. Touchdown, California. Well, if you wondered if the Pac-10 team would be fired up to be in the Las Vegas Bowl, there is the answer. You know, the thing about this Cal football team, they're young. Mm -hmm. They are really one of the youngest football teams in the country. And that being said, they're going to be ready for this football game. Tom Schneider. To attempt the extra point, and it is good. An impressive opening drive. Nice balance of run and pass. They went 65 yards on a bowl road trip to score seven. We're back at the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Mountain West against Pac-10 for the fifth year in a row. The two conferences have split the last four meetings with two wins apiece. Pac-10 on the board first here. An eight play 65 yard drive. It took just more than three minutes. And Steve Levy, the quarterback, a perfect three for three. Marshawn Lynch scored the touchdown. David Maloney kicks off into the end zone. It is muffed and then down. Muffed by Breon Jones. Down by Michael Morris. Here's the offensive line for BYU. The Reynolds brothers outstanding in the middle of that line. Lance Reynolds, the center and all conference player in Mountain West. Three wide receivers and the tight end Harleen is the leading pass receiver for the BYU Cougars. John Beck having a terrific year, more than 3,000 yards passing, and Curtis Brown is a 1,000 yard plus rusher, 1,095 rushing yards this season. Beck is thrown for 3,357, the first 3,000 yard passing season at BYU since 2001 by Brandon Doman, who's now his quarterback coach. Beck was hit as he threw, got it out to Fahu Tahi. He splits time in the backfield with Curtis Brown. And a short gain on the play. Ryan Foltz made the tackle. For the California Golden Bears up front, Tafisi, Mibane, Ma'afala, and Umbaku, the front four. Young linebackers, with the exception of Ryan Foltz, who's a 50-year senior, they played very well as a group, and a veteran secondary of Hughes, Smith, McCleskey, and Mixon. And a whistle. And it looked like Eddie Keel, the left tackle move. Ball start, number 59, offense. Five yards, remain second down. Sean, the big splits between the guard and tackle by BYU. That's going to be interesting all night. Look at this split on both sides. Cal saw this offense in the bowl game last year against Texas Tech. And the Red Raiders scored 45 points. They seem better prepared early tonight. Nathan Nickel the catch, and Donnie McCleskey drove him out of bounds for a loss. Back to the 16-yard line. Every coach I talked to at Cal said Donnie McCleskey is the heart and soul of this football team. Defensively here makes a big tackle. There's Robert and I. He was the offensive line coach at Texas Tech last year, hired by Bronco Mendenhall this season to lead this offense that closely resembles what Texas Tech runs. Robert and I, a former offensive lineman at BYU on the 84 National Championship team. Beck under duress, gets away. And goes out of bounds at a 24, well short of the first down. Chased out by Tim Mixon. And BYU a little harried on this first possession of the football game. When you have those big splits now, you have to have one-on-one -on -one pass protection. When you move those tackles way outside, they're caught for holding here, too. All of a sudden, you're in space. You don't get any holding. help. Number 73 offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Jake Caressa, the right tackle. Ball for the hold. They turn it down to force a punt. And Sean, 
as if they can't handle the defensive line of Cal, they'll move those splits in a little tighter to get help. Derek McLaughlin is the putter. Junior from Mesa, Arizona, spent a couple of years at the University of Washington and was their starting putter. Went on an LDS church mission to Argentina and then came to BYU. And he nearly had a block, and it's a booming putt, and there is a flag now. The putter is still down in the field. Looked like Harrison Smith hit the putter. 61 yard putt. And it's Tim Mixon on the return all the way to the 22 yard line at BYU. But it looks like it's all going to be wiped out because McLaughlin was wiped out by Harrison Smith. 56 yard return. Personal foul. Rocking the kicker. Number 11 on the deep receiving team. 15 yards. First down. I'm sure Cal figures they can block a kick. Harrison Smith runs into the kicker. All of a sudden, when you get back there, one of the guys protecting is Brian Sanders, 6'3", 348 pounds. So you're going to run into him before you run into the kicker. Yeah, very few of the BYU players and coaches call him Brian. His nickname is Lunchroom. Roger French, <laughs> former assistant coach gave him the name lunchroom Jeff Grimes the current line coach says I don't think I've ever called him Brian back number 20 on the return that penalty is declined the roughing the kicker penalty on number 11 is accepted first down so he's it he's not only in the lunchroom but uh, he plays on the offensive line and then has to go back he's the left guard look at the size of Number 78, Lunchroom Sanders. Mm. And now, if you're going to block and kick, you've got to get through him first. He was part of a mammoth offensive line in terms of average weight, as a matter of fact. This is the heaviest at nearly 330 pounds per man across the line. 10 pounds heavier per man than the Michigan front five. So back in the offense, a chance to continue. And it isn't going any better after the penalty. Nuu Tafisi with the sack for Cal, the junior from Pomona, California. He's their pass rusher, Tafisi. He'll come from the outside. Number 53 spins off the block, makes the play. Four and a half sacks on the year now for Tafisi. He was a junior college academic All American. Before he came to Cal. He's from Mount San Antonio Junior College. Beck flush from the pocket. Very close to the line of scrimmage when he threw and it's incomplete. Curtis Brown couldn't hang on. Mickey Pimentel had the coverage. Pimentel was right there, Sean. Made a great play. Got his left hand up. Good coverage. They're forcing John Beck out of the pocket. They're making him throw on the run. And a flag thrown before the snap. Substitution infraction on BYU, number 10, left the field after the formation had been set, five yards, third down. Matt Allen, one of their wide receivers. Well, it hasn't been the perfect start for Bronco Mendenhall and these BYU Cougars. Offensively or defensively? No, defensively, really, California came out with an excellent plan early. Already four penalties against BYU. Beck will go out of the shotgun. This time, a lot of time. Runs it short and incomplete. Off the hands of Fahu Tahi. 
Cooper's just look a little shaky right now on offense. Sh shaky and didn't take advantage of the penalty by Cal roughing the kicker. Well, here's Derek McLaughlin again. Apparently not injured after taking a pretty good hit from Harrison Smith on the last punt attempt. Mixon back deep again. Fourth down and 20 from the 29 yard line. Lunchroom and friends will try to provide better protection for McLaughlin this time. Not as good a punt, but no chance for Mixon to field it. It takes a great bounce for the Cougars down to the 23 yard line. A 48 yard punt. Lunchroom back for a snack. Las Vegas Bowl. Las Vegas, where no one knows what play you're going to run. Only Vegas. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Zales, be brilliant. Among the many fun activities for the players on these two teams, this week, trip to the ESPN zone in Las Vegas. Trip to the end zone in the first possession. For Cal, back on the attack again from the one 23-yard line. Marshawn Lynch runs for 10. And a first down. Once again, here's Alex Flanagan. Hey, Sean and Michael, one of the things that strikes you down here on the sidelines is that about three-quarters of this stadium is quiet and seated. Uh, the section behind me, one of the few Cal sections here, and they're getting pretty loud. About 30,000 of the fans here tonight are cheering for BYU. Now, Bronco Mendenhall knew that that would be the case, and he talked about being able to come out and make a quick start tonight to gain advantage of all of the BYU fans here. So far, BYU's given them little to cheer about. And the Cal section, you guys, starting to heat up behind me. They sold all 8,000 of their tickets, which they were allotted, and Cal was looking for more as well. The Golden Bears well represented. Sam Desaw with the catch for a four yard gain. Hard earned four yards. Just his fourth catch of the year, sophomore from the Bay Area. Here's the problem BYU has. They want to box up everything. You get eight guys in the box, but the skill of California on the outside is so tough for them to defend. They have a problem. They have to stop the run with eight people and all of a sudden their wide receivers are a uh, cow's wide receivers are better than their corners. And Bronco Mendenhall saw something he did not like and he asked for a timeout. Middle of the first quarter Jeff Tedford and the Golden Bears leading seven to nothing. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. Near Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. California with a seven to nothing lead middle of the first quarter. Dan with the ball, second and six from the own 38 yard line. Now Sean Lynch bounces outside, another first down. Chased out by Justin Robinson. Let's go to Chris Fowler now in the studio for a Sports Center 30 and 30 update. Sean, thank you. A holiday season family tragedy suffered by the popular head coach of the Indianapolis coach, Tony Dungy. His son, James Dungy, found dead early today in Tampa at the age of 18. And sheriff's officials down there are saying that based on the evidence, it appears to be a suicide. Dungy has traveled to Tampa, may not join the team for Saturday's game in Seattle. Assistant Jim Caldwell will take over in the meantime. Details on Sports Center after the game. Back to you guys. Okay, Chris, thank you. Steve Levy with a deep pass, and it's broken up by Cale Buchanan. Intended for Deshaun Jackson, the freshman, who's their leading receiver for the year. And, Mike, I don't know of a person who's more well-liked in all of football than Tony Dungy. It's a tragedy by any standard, and our thoughts and prayers are certainly with Coach Dungy and his family and the entire Colts family. And, Sean, he's a man of uh, solid faith, faith in uh, God and uh, so I know he uh, everybody's prayers are with him. From midfield second and ten Justin Forsett comes in now at running back. Levy throws to the near side. Deshaun Jackson makes the miss. First down and more. There's a flag down. It looked like an illegal block near the 33 yard line. Jackson a very talented freshman. A true freshman. Jeff Tedford raving about his great speed and body control and hands. He has the whole package. 
That looked like it was going to be a loss. Did look, Mike, like BYU was more alert to that quick throw outside. Foley, number 82 on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Craig Sean, Stevens, the tight end. Almost eight minutes gone in this first quarter. Jeff Tedford has done everything. Uh, he's run the football at BYU. He's thrown the screens outside, the quick passes. He goes downtown to get the defensive backs off of him. He has a great game plan here early. He does call the plays in conjunction with offensive coordinator George Cortez. Jeff Tedford for many years, the offensive coordinator at Oregon. There is no escape prior to that. He also coached in the Canadian Football League in Calgary. Levy very poised in his second career start and very accurate. Shows he can run as well. Levy's four for five and his only miss was on the deep ball moments ago. He just doesn't rattle. He does the right things. Here he pulls the ball down, tries to run for a first down. He doesn't make mistakes. That's what you want out of your quarterback. He's had a very interesting career since coming to Cal. Out of Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey. He was not highly recruited. Sent tapes around the country to a lot of programs. Wanted to stay in the East, perhaps play at Rutgers in state. It came down to Cal or Connecticut. Chris Mandarino, the fullback, the third and short, picks up the first down. When he arrived, he redshirted. They had Kyle Boulder. And then the next spring, Aaron Rodgers arrived from junior college. Levy said uh, he knew his days at quarterback might be numbered. He moved to fullback and hated it, in his words. <laughs> said his technique was terrible. Wanted to play linebacker, but they had 15 scholarship linebackers. Then with Aaron Rodgers leaving to go to the NFL. They had lost two other quarterbacks out of the program. He moved back to quarterback this spring. Started the year number three. But the opening night started. Nate Longshore broke his leg in their opener against Sacramento State. Joe A.U. had an up and down ride thereafter. And they went to Levy for the series finale. Eric, the season finale. Eric Began could not handle Levy's pass. And Sean, that's a good lesson for all the young people watching this football game. You never give up. He was told he was going to be a fallback. He wanted to be a linebacker. He is playing quarterback the position he wants because of perseverance. He said, how lucky am I? I couldn't get anybody to take me. Then I wind up at Cal with the best quarterback coach in the country in Jeff Tedford. That pass a little too high for Robert Jordan. As Jeff Tedford's had a remarkable career working with quarterbacks. Back in the days at Fresno State, David Carr and Trent Dilfer. He was at Oregon, Joey Harrington, Akili Smith. Kyle Boulder and Aaron Rodgers at Cal. This guy has tutored a lot of first round NFL draft picks. The other thing about Jeff Tedford, he knows how to run the football. He has a thousand yard rusher all the time. Every season that he's been the head coach at Cal, they've had a thousand yard rusher. Third and ten. Levy out of the gun. The Cougars blitz. Levy bounces off. And a tough run to get back near the line of scrimmage. Finally, Justin Luke Garote got him on the ground. He talked about Steve Levy. You don't want to be in third ten with the running game. You don't want to get behind the change because even though he can throw the football, he's better running it and passing the ball off to the Marshawn Lynch. Well, David Loney, the Australian on the punt. He's 26 years old. Spent some time at junior college at Ellsworth in Iowa before coming to Cal. Track star in high school in Australia. Soccer player, water polo player. They try to pin the Cougars in deep. Nathan Nickel back deep. He watches it go over his head. It takes a great bounce for the Golden Bears and will be down near the six yard line. 31 yard punt. By Loney. Friends, log on to ESPN.com. Vote for your choice for Pontiac game changing performance of the year, and then tune into the Rose Bowl to find out who won. The winning school will receive $100,000 toward its general scholarship fund from Pontiac. And there are some great plays from which to choose. Log on to ESPN.com. BYU off 
to a rough start. Offensively, just one first down. They played conservatively with the poor field position, and Curtis Brown ran across the 10 to the 11-yard line, tackled by Anthony Felder, a freshman linebacker, true freshman. And as Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator, says, when you're a true freshman, you're starting at this level. That says a lot about the talent you have. Lunchroom is on the sideline. He needs a rest. It's a little more crowded on that sideline when lunchroom is over there. The handoff to Curtis Brown with lots of running room in the first big game of the night for BYU. Goes across the 25 yard line. Donnie McCleskey ran him down. That's a 15 yard pickup for Brigham Young University. The best thing about the splits is sometimes when they're rushing the passer, they'll go inside. You break a run outside. Curtis Brown showed that on that play. Well, this is a junior from Palmdale, California, about 70 miles north of Los Angeles. He's replaced by Fahu Tahi. Beck throws to Nathan Nickel. And another good gain, about nine. He's very near another first down. Mickey Pimentel had the coverage for Cal. You talked about it. It didn't look like BYU when they came out. Uh, they were poised enough. Now they've settled down. They're calling the plays, mixing the run and pass. Look a little better right now. Yes, they do. Second and one. Ooh, what a hit. Tahi got leveled by Greg Van Hoosen. Van Hoosen is an art major, renowned within the team for his terrific painting and sculpting ability, and he splattered Tahi on the canvas that time. Nobody blocked him. Loss of a yard, third down and two. Under four minutes to go in the first quarter, 7 nothing Cal. John Beck out of the shotgun. Had plenty of time. And is it caught? Yes, it is. Terrific catch by Todd Watkins along the far sideline with Tim Mixon in coverage. It's an eight-yard gain and a first down. You talk about a big-time catch. Todd Watkins, 44 catches this year, eight touchdowns, goes after the football well, reaches up, good concentration, comes down with the football. Here's their third leading receiver. Tight end Harleen, their leading receiver, the running back Brown, the number two receiver in this spread attack. Beck goes out of bounds. Ryan Foltz. Wisely backed off and did not hit Beck as he crossed the boundary after a three yard game. Sean, I did the game BYU. John Beck came into the game. The hot dog vendor pulled the plug on ESPN. We went dark. Mm -hmm. Mark Malone, I was doing the game. He was in for three plays, got sacked, fumbled, threw an interception. The power came back on. Nobody even knew he was in the game. He told me two <laughs> weeks later, he said it was good that you pulled the plug. Second and seven. Quick pass to Nathan Nickel. A nice spin move to get the first down. Donnie McCleskey made the tackle, but it's eight more on the completion to the junior from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Beck, a veteran starter, now a junior. Started four games as a true freshman in 2003. All but one start last year. And he has started every game this season and was first team all conference. With more than 3,300 passing yards. He's going for more than 6,700 in his career entering tonight's action. Going for 517 yards in an overtime loss to TCU this year. Davis Brown couldn't find him in the running room, so he lowered his head to get back to the line of scrimmage. Harrison Smith made the tackle with Anthony Felder. Here's Alex Flanagan. 
Hey, Sean. Well, John Beck had uh, relatively no injuries in high school. Then he got to BYU. As you guys talked about, he was thrown into playing his freshman year. That year, he suffered a concussion and ended the season with a broken hand. Then last year, he played half the season with a separated shoulder. This time, it's really the first time since high school that he's been healthy, and uh, it's shown, Sean. Well, he's had a terrific year. Born in the Bay Area, California. Grew up in Mesa, Arizona. A big BYU fan. That pass was errant. Intended for Todd Watkins. Beck's dad was a track athlete at BYU, Wendell. And when he was a young boy in Mesa, Arizona, his dad got a special antenna to hook up to the TV set so they could try to get BYU football games. He said his dad would be in the house watching the TV. John would be twisting around outside the house when he was about eight years old. Listening to hear his dad tell him, okay, it's a good picture now, you can come in. And play of this drive. Nowhere to go. Finally checks it down to Nickel. And Nickel, another good run after the catch. And it looks like they might give him the spot for the first down. Near the 38 yard line, Mickey Pimentel made the tackle. Nickel at 24 catches for the year. Entering tonight's game, and he's had four already tonight. There is Anna Beck, who is a freshman at BYU, John's sister, and a Cougarette. They are a BYU family. Him and his maternal grandmother, Barbara Dalton Farnsworth, who was in the Utah band as a clarinet player 55 years ago, has come across. To the other side to cheer for BYU on fourth and short. Curtis Brown, based on that official running in from the near side, it looks like they're going to give him the first down. And it is a first down for BYU. Sean, you talk about missions. BYU goes on missions. Their quarterback, John Beck, took a mission from 2000 to 2002. But the problem is when you're quarterback, you don't throw the football you're not in competition so it's tougher for a quarterback than an offensive or defensive lineman. That's an LDS mission with Church of Jesus Christ of Light Latter Day Saints. Curtis Brown stacked up for no gain. 62 players on this BYU team have gone on church missions. As you mentioned Mike Beck went to Portugal so it's an older team many of the players 23 24 years old and that maturity has certainly paid dividends over the years although it does take them a while when they come back from those missions to get back into football shape. Wahoo Tahi is in a running back the final seconds of the first quarter. BYU Starting to find some rhythm after a tough start. And another completion. This one to Matt Allen for a first down to the 24 yard line. 13 yards. Tim Mixon had the coverage. When LaBelle Edwards was coaching BYU and Norm Child, the offense, the wide receivers would make catches all the time. Here, Matt Allen, another good catch bringing the ball in. There's the legendary Lavelle Edwards who put that football program on the map for whom the stadium in Provo is now appropriately named. Things are looking up for Edwards and the Cougars. After one, California leads by seven. Welcome back to the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. After one quarter, California leads seven to nothing to BYU. Started deep in its own territory on this drive. Five first downs on the march. They've moved to the Cal 25 yard line. And they have it first and 10. Wahoo Tahi is the running back. And Jason to Beck out of the shotgun. A four man rush. Beck runs straight up the middle and slides near another first down. Desmond Bishop nearby. Dream man pass rush by Cal. John Beck couldn't find a receiver. Lunchroom is back in the offensive line. John Beck tucks the ball up, 
Everybody in coverage picks up good yardage. It was a first down. They gave him the 14 yard line. He used a timeout, the second, expended by the Cougars. BYU on the move, looking for a tying touchdown early in the second quarter. Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Thank you very much. Thank you to Curtis Brown and Elvis. <laughs> BYU on the move. 15th play of the drive. They started at their own eight yard line. They're first and 10 at the 14 of Cal. With the Golden Bears leading 7 to nothing. Back out of the shotgun. Curtis Brown took the handoff. Looked like movement by the offense. I believe it was Daniel Coates who doubles with Harleen at tight end. Number 20, offense, five yards, remains first down. It was Coates. And we have two excellent tight ends. Coates and Harleen rotate. Sometimes you'll move the defense just before the offense the quarterback's going to make the play call and somebody jumps. Five out of six on the drive for Beck. Five penalties in the game already for BYU. Ball shows blitz. They bring pressure. The pass is caught by Curtis Brown inside the five. Touchdown! Sixteenth touchdown of the year for Curtis Brown, his second TD reception. They're an extra point away from tying it up. And that's much more like the offense Cougar fans have seen all year. Engineered by John Beck, a 19-yard touchdown pass. 92-yard drive. Jared McLaughlin ties the game with the extra point. It took six minutes and four seconds, a long road trip, resulting in the tying score. Another trip to the end zone for Curtis Brown. He finished the regular season by having multiple touchdowns in five of their last six regular season games. Trying to help the Cougars to their first bowl win since they beat Kansas State in the 96 Cotton Bowl. Marshawn Lynch runs back the kick off to Cal, and he's out to the 32-yard line. Gary Lovely made the tackle, 27-yard return. During the return, personal foul, face mask, grabbing and twisting and turning against the kicking team, 15 yards, first down. Is that five yards for each? Grabbing, grabbing. Is five, twisting five, turning five? I think so. Here's the defense right now. Desmond Bishop, the linebacker, Scott Curtis Brown. Man for man, he gets too wide. Curtis Brown gets inside of him. On the angle pass, John Beck delivers the end zone. That's a good kickoff return. It's Curtis Brown's dad, Herman, and the penalty, the ball out of midfield. Levy out throwing. Deshaun Jackson got hugged down to the ground at the 44 yard line by Spencer White. Another veteran on the BYU defense, senior playing in his last game, said he assumed he came to BYU with a great tradition. He played a lot of bowl games. This is his first bowl game. I'm right down the street from the campus in Orem, Utah. One of the 62 players who's returned from a church mission. Uncle Mendenhall said he's a great program guy. This is his first year on scholarship as a senior. Good cutback by Justin Forsett. 
He started the night with 962 rushing yards, 38 for 1,000 to give them a pair of 1,000 yard rushers in the same season. And that's a rarity. Ron Gold talked about the running back coach, talked about the patient nature of Justin Forsett. He started outside, patient, waited for the hole to open, cut back inside. Six yard gain on that carry to Forsett. Levy going for a touchdown to Robert Jordan, and he could not hang on. There are flags down against Cale Buchanan, who interfered but probably saved a touchdown by doing so. Now, you're right. If Buchanan doesn't pull the arm of Robert Jordan, the band director hits the instruments up, play the fight Pass song. Interference. Number 34 on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. This was a well thrown <laughs> ball by Steve Levy. No question about the call. That's a smart play. Now in the NFL they'd get that ball there at the one yard line but in college football the 15 yard walk off from the line so it's at the 23 the penalty prevented a touchdown. Now with more work to do seven penalties already against the Cougars. Now Sean Lynch the running back. He had tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Paul Walkenhorst. Another of these uh, veteran players, 24 years old. He's married. He and his wife, Angela, are expecting a baby boy in May. They met at BYU. And he is the only player on the team who played in the 2001 Liberty Bowl, the last time they were in the bowl game. They have players who played in bowl games prior to that who left and went on missions and missed that Liberty Bowl. Lynch again. Breaks some tackles and now is going to take it into the end zone. Touchdown. Looked like Marshawn Lynch was dead at the line of scrimmage. But he bounced off some hits and went 23 yards to give Cal the lead again. Lynch number 11 in the country this season in rushing yards per game at 117 per ball game in a season bothered by injuries he had a broken pinky that caused him to miss two games he still rushed for more than a thousand yards Tom Schneider adds the extra point and three minutes into the second quarter the Golden Bears are back on top by the time this game's over I'm going to say Cal's in the top 20 next year with all these young players but by the time this game's over I might move them up to 10th Marshawn Lynch four set to two running backs a double dose of problems for BYU well, it is as you said a number of times Mike a very young team Shining seven days a week Expectations on, were still high despite this the fact the they lost right a lot of key players and I put from that 10 win team last year. All day. I hope Marshawn will forgive us for interrupting him. <laughs> but uh, they return just about everybody in their key positions next year. Here's what they have back 92% of their scoring, 92% of the receiving, 95% of the rushing, both Lynch and four set back. Well, I think they're uh, easily going to be. The top 15 in the country preseason team. You are already moved them up five spots. Uh, maybe even the top 10. Hey, they were in the top 10 this year when they started out five and all. Oh. No chance for Breon Jones to run back the kickoff. But they started five and all, oh, Mike, against a pretty weak schedule yeah. particularly as you reflect back on it Sacramento State Washington Illinois New Mexico State and Arizona not a powerhouse certainly among them and then finally the uh, quarterback issues more than anything else seem to affect them they lost a heartbreaker to UCLA by a touchdown lost by three to Oregon State and up losing four out of five games before they won the regular season finale against Stanford. 
Beck throws caught in traffic by Todd Watkins for a first down on an 11 yard gain to the 31 yard line Damian Hughes the tackle you talked about the schedule they really you'd be hard pressed to say they beat a real good football no, team. Now, they didn't beat a good team all yeah. year. We mentioned the first five wins. Their other victories were against Washington State and Stanford. But close against UCLA. Davis Brown. A tough run for a couple. We saw his dad. Herman Brown moments ago we spoke from Curtis yesterday he had a lot to say about how much he appreciated the role his parents played in his life there's the numbers you were talking about Mike combined 28 and 60 in their seven wins big win against Stanford though they dominated the Cardinals. John Beck Hit as he throws. It's a wobbly duck and it's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. Second interception of the year for the senior from Oakland. Cal put pressure on. Good defensive charge. Hit John Beck. John Beck, the ball floated on him. Harrison Smith picked it off. Here's John Beck sitting in the pocket. Gets hit backside. And then to BC with the to pressure. BC and then the ball gets away. Harrison Smith on the pick. And the return to the 43 yard line of BYU. And a fumble on the handoff. Justin Forsett looked like he got it back. Lost a couple on the play back to the 45 yard line. Justin Forsett, Sean thought he was going to Notre Dame. Didn't have a scholarship. And believe it or not, Cal, the only one that offered him, if Cal wouldn't have taken Justin Forsett, he would have gone Division I AA. He's out of grace prep in. Arlington, Texas. He thought he had a commitment from Notre Dame under the uh, Ty Willingham coaching staff. High throw and a catch out of bounds by Robert Jordan. But Coach Willingham and his staff got a couple of commitments from other running backs relatively late in the process. They wound up telling Forsett that they did not have a spot for him, and it was looking like he was going to go to South Carolina State. But then Chuck Muncie. The former great Cal running back got in touch with the Cal coaches. His friend Mike Barber, the former NFL tight end, was Forsett's high school coach. They got a tape to Jeff Tedford. He said he couldn't believe what he was seeing when he watched the tape. So much talent on film and no place to go. Here's a screen from Marshawn Lynch. Patiently waiting for some blocks and goes down to the 40 well shy of the first down. Jeff Tedford said. He assumed after watching that tape, well, there must be something wrong. The kid's a terrible student, talking about Forsett. Maybe he's a problem child. They looked into that, found out he's a good student, a terrific young man, and they really stumbled into something with Justin Forsett. If Mike Barber calls you and says, mm -hmm. I got a player, you take the call and you say, Mike Barber played, and he knows the game. That was a tight end in the NFL for 10 years. David Loney to punt. Very high. Nathan Mickett again watches it go over his head. And this time Loney did not get the bounce. So the interception did not hurt BYU. They're still down by seven in the second quarter. And here, Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. The Nikon D50 Digital SLR. Incredible pictures made incredibly easy. And eLoan. For home, auto, or equity loans, go to eLoan.com. eLoan. Radically simple. It's been a fun week. 
Here in Las Vegas for the players on these two teams. Tough run. Ahu Tahi looked like he'd be down to the line. He turned that one into an 18 yard gain. Donnie McCleskey finally managed to shove him out of bounds. Tahi, 260 pounds, 4, 5, 6 in the 40. Potential to wear down the defense. He's a load. About 260 pounds. They list him at 240. But Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, said he's closer to 260. Huge and powerful. From time to 4, 5, 6 in the 40. Curtis Brown back in. He's dropped for a loss. Orrell Williams, a linebacker, freshman from Sacramento. Good with job. the tackle. Good job by Worrell Williams. Getting penetration on the offensive line of BYU. Loss of five on the play, second and 15. That goes on the center this time. Brown will run back. And looks like. And Meebane was offside. <laughs> Terrific player, Meebane, of course. Defense, five yards, remains second down. In the words of Bob Gregory, first team all conference, he was voted. Cal's most valuable defensive lineman by his teammates and he's usually facing double teams. He's been bothered by an ankle injury all year and he's still been productive. And Jeff Tedford compares him to Mike Patterson defensive lineman from USC last year can dominate a game. Been talking he might leave early after this year to head to the NFL himself. Brandon said he wants to come back and get his degree and be an All-American. Second and 10 from the 38. Beck throws quickly to Daniel Coates. He's in great effort on both sides tonight. Donnie McCleskey made the tackle, but Coates battled for every inch and wound up with seven yards. Now you're right. I said earlier tonight, these are young football teams. Sometimes they're not spoiled by other bowl games and going to the Rose Bowl or someplace. They're happy to be here. The effort tonight by both these teams have been great. Third down and three. Some late substitutions for the Cal defense. Today a time to get set. Midway through the second quarter. And the ball is dropped by Harleen. With Harrison Smith in coverage. And that's a rarity. There's a flag on the play. The officials are conferring. There's a catch, and then Harrison Smith pulls it out. I think you've got to say that's an incompletion. They're going to give it to him. The play is going to be reviewed. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You know, I. Here a lot of times you yeah, it looked like an incomplete pass. Yeah, I'm gonna say it was definitely incomplete. Here's the catch. Harrison Smith pulls it out. Well, yeah, he's got his feet no. down. He's got his hands around the ball for a little bit. I don't like guys change their minds. But I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> But you're gonna change I your may, mind? I may change my mind after that slow. Replay there. And they're using the Big Ten model for replay review here. It is Conference USA officials Jack Vaughn in the replay booth will make the decision. And again, the call was a catch and a first down, so you need conclusive evidence to overturn that call. This is a tough one. This is why referees make that big money. 
officials. I'm going to say well, analysts make change. good money too to give their well, opinion. So I, go I ahead. Know, but I, I stated my opinion early. Now I'm changing. So I, I'm saying it's a catch. I'm saying a catch. So All right. Well, it's an important decision because if it is, it'll keep the drive alive. And if not, it'll probably be a punt for Bronco Mendenhall. Bronco, a native of Alpine, Utah, played at Oregon State, got a start in coaching at Oregon State with Rocky Long as the defensive coordinator with the Beavers. They really pioneered this 3-3-5 defensive alignment that has spread to some other places yeah. around the country West Virginia most notably Joe Lee Dunn in Memphis they talked to him and they put this defense in I want to go back to what you said analysts make a lot of money you need to make a call here we need to educate you Bronco Mendenhall was not the first choice for the job he says as a matter of fact when Gary Croton was dismissed he thought he wouldn't get the job because the perception was that he and Gary Croton were very close and they were they remain very good friends and Bronco Menhall's delighted for Gary Croton who's now the offensive coordinator at Oregon that he's had a terrific year with the Ducks and a big part of their success but it was originally offered to Kyle Whittingham who at the time was the defensive coordinator at Utah the arch rival of BYU Whittingham was trying to choose between BYU and Utah he elected to choose the head coaching job at Utah after Urban Meyer left he'd been coaching under Meyer and at Utah for a long time and that opened the door for Bronco Mendenhall who was hired by Tom Holmo the athletic director at BYU who was the predecessor to Jeff Tedford as the head coach at Cal Tedford took over for Tom Holmo who recruited a lot of these Cal players or some of them who are now playing against Tom Holmo's team tonight. Well it is a tough call on the replay and the replay official is certainly taking his time. Don't blame me. Here's the catch. Got to put that right catch. there. He looks like that's he controlled catch. the ball feet on the ground. The catch. And that was recovered by the sideline by Harleen might have gone out of bounds but I think the issue was was it a catch Jeff Tedford 44 years old a California native after reviewing the play the receiver never had possession of the ball passes incomplete fourth down shall I leave now I got that wrong well it's like the SATs Mike stick with your first instinct well, I'm, I believe he caught that football. Well, live, before we saw any replays, I didn't think it was a catch. Yeah. And then we saw that first replay. I think you could make the argument that was a catch. Right. And I'm not sure there was enough evidence to say that it was not a catch, that he did not have position based on what we saw. But that hey, is their story. Just and because they it. say it, it's incomplete, doesn't mean it's right. And we know you feel strongly both ways as we've already established with your commentary on this issue. Well, here's Derek McLaughlin to punt for the second time. That's the third time he's attempted to punt. He was rough the first time when he boomed a 61 yarder. He seems to feel better when they run into him. But he's been fortunate with the bounces a couple of times tonight. And it'll be downed at the 11 yard line. A 44 yard punt down by Gary Lovelick. Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl, middle of the second quarter. California with the football and a one touchdown lead. They begin first and 10 at their own 11 yard line. John McDonough with Mike Gottfried and Alex Flanagan. A handoff from Steve Levy to Marshawn Lynch. Again, he bounces off tacklers and stumbled down at the 17 yard line. Get it, Markel Stafiri with the tackle. And look at the Nikon game track. Marshawn Lynch off to another. Terrific start on his way to another big game. It seems he has scored both touchdowns. 
And the score for Cal, the 16th touchdown of the year for Curtis Brown. Second receiving touchdown. Lynch again, dragging tacklers with him. Luke wrote for a ride with Justin Coward at the 22. It's a first down. By the way, the 16 touchdowns this season for Curtis Brown, the second highest single season total in BYU history. Luke Staley scored 28 touchdowns in 2001 when he won the Doak Walker Award as the best running back in the country. You think that's in the uh, ESPN uh, book? College football encyclopedia. I'm sure it is. Sir. That's why you should have that for Christmas. Great. Well, it couldn't be a stocking stuff unless you had a huge stocking. It was an enormous book, but it certainly does have everything you'd ever want to know about college football. Marshawn Lynch, the ball carrier. And right on cue, tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the last coach to lead Cal to three straight bowl appearances? Now, that does not include Jeff Tedford because right. he's... The I know the guy, answer. He's done it right I now. I know the answer. You know the but answer. Before Jeff Tedford. Yes, we we both know this one. <laughs> Justin Forsett for the first down. Now to the 34-yard line, knocked down by Dustin Gabriel, legendary coach at Cal. Pappy Waldorf, Lynn Pappy Waldorf, who took him to three straight Rose Bowls when Cal was a power back in the late 40s and early 50s. And some lean years between then and now, but Jeff Tedford has done a remarkable job. You know, when I think of Cal, I think of Joe Cap. He was a fighter quarterback. And he, he played the game the way you want to play it. The Cal timeout. Steve Levy's done a nice job managing the game for the Golden Bears so far. Five minutes to go in the half. A seven-point lead for Cal. As a public university on the planet, even better. By extending the frontiers of education and knowledge. By solving tomorrow's problems today. And by teaching future Nobel Prize winners. We are here to uphold more than a century of blue and gold tradition. With new facilities to connect our students and athletes. And a transformed stadium to connect our past with our future. That's why we're at Berkeley. Where are you? We're back in Las Vegas. Cal with a timeout, facing first and 10 tomorrow night. Top 20 offense against the top 20 defense. The Kansas Jayhawk D will have to contend with the high power Houston Cougar offense, led by quarterback Kevin Cobb. The ESPN's bowl road trip continues with the Fort Worth Bowl tomorrow night. Average begins with college game day bowl special presented by Outback Statehouse at 7:30 Eastern Time. How about the job Mark Mangino's done in Kansas? Lady under duress and sacked. Back of the 29 yard line, Paul Walkenhorst with the first sack of the night for BYU. BYU has to get pressure on Levy. Walkenhorst comes, makes a tackle on Levy, couldn't get rid of the football. A rare throw on first down where they were trying to throw down the field. Walking horse back in football this year after two years away from football due to injuries and a battle with depression. Pass out in the flat. Robert Jordan, the catch. We had a nice visit with Paul Walking Horse yesterday, and he said at the beginning, when he first started to feel depressed, he thought it was because he kept battling injuries and was preventing him from playing football, and football was such an important part of his life. But then he started to feel as he was thinking about not playing football at all that there was a lot more to it than that that counseling a woman helped him a great deal and uh, he's back playing football and enjoying it to the point where he wants to get into coaching when he finished it's good good story third and long 
Levy with a lot of time zings one and it is incomplete. Great effort by Deshaun Jackson with the throw just a little bit low on the way. Justin Robinson had the coverage and the Golden Bears will punt. A little too late by Steve Levy. Waited too long. I'm sure Jeff Tedford will talk to him. Deshaun Jackson already in his route and ran out of room. You're wondering, Steve Levy, the quarterback, is not related to Steve Levy, the talented Sports Center anchor here on ESPN. They have emailed back and forth a couple of times in recent weeks. Steve Levy, the quarterback, wants to be a sports broadcaster and plans to visit the ESPN studios and meet his fellow Steve Levy in the next few weeks. David Loney's punt returned by Nathan Mickle. There is a flag down at the 19 yard line. 51 yard punt, 20 yard return. Speaking of the studio, here's Chris Fowler. Sean, thank you. This is a 30 at 30 update. If you have not yet heard Indianapolis Colts head coach Tony Dungy not with his team as they prepare for Saturday's game in Seattle, he has flown home to Tampa in the wake of a family tragedy. Dungy's 18 year old son James found dead in his apartment early Thursday. Sheriff's officials saying it is an apparent suicide. Assistant coach Jim Caldwell taking over the team while Dungy is away tending to family business. More on this story reaction from the Colts on SportsCenter following the game. John. Thank you Chris. Enormously tragic and sad. Illegal block on BYU during the punt return. Negates the nice return by Mickle. And BYU begins at its own nine yard line. Trailing by seven under four minutes to go in the half. Nice cut. There's a flag down thrown where you would expect holding. And that will likely Wipe out a nice five yard run by Curtis Brown where the penalties have killed BYU here in the first half. Holding number 65 on the offense after this to the goal remains first down. It's Dallas Reynolds the left guard with the ninth penalty of the half for Brigham Young University. This might be a chance here at Field position wise, you may want to take a shot here with Todd Watkins in the uh, deep route. Two Reynolds brothers play side by side in that offensive line. They have another brother, Matt, who is signed to play at BYU and will join them after he finishes a church mission. Back in trouble, falling down as he throws. And no whistles, no sign of an incomplete pass. Abu Mafala put the hit on Beck, and I'm still not sure what the officials, apparently they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Jeff Tedford doesn't like it. Well, they are putting the ball back near the five-yard line and ruling it an incomplete pass. Jeff Tedford waiting for the replay here on the scoreboard. Terrence Brown, a backup lineman in there trying to protect. Perhaps a break there for BYU. Second and 14. Beck gets rid of it quickly this time. Caught by Nickel. He's near the 12 yard line. They'll need seven more for a first down. After a gain of seven, Harrison Smith, another tackle. What Cal's doing well is in the secondary when the catch is made by BYU. Nickel, and Matt Allen, Todd Watkins are making tackles right away. No yards after the catch. So Nickel the number 84 written on his arm there. That's for Michael Reed, another wide receiver who has a hand injury and is unable to play tonight. Five catches for Nickel. Third down and seven. Back throws that time. Harleen hangs on and refuses to go down. Johnny Harleen all the way out to the 37 yard line. A gain of 25 as they convert on third down and seven. A good throw by John Beck. Harleen with a good catch. A leading receiver coming into this game with 56 catches. That ball was thrown on the mark. 
He redshirted last year after he returned from a two year mission in New York City. What a great experience. That is my favorite city in the world. But mostly Spanish while working in the neighborhoods of the boroughs of New York City. Watkins is wide open and he caught it. Had to wait for the ball or else it would have been a touchdown as he was behind the defense. They'll mark it at the 11 yard line, 54 yards on the play. You said, Mike, they should take a deep shot to Watkins. They listened and completed. They beat Damian Hughes. Todd Watkins ran right by him. Made a good catch. And a timeout called by Cal trying to regroup. 30,000 or so BYU fans here and very excited after that play. And Mike, after the shaky start on the first possession for the BYU offense, we've seen the form that made them one of the most prolific offensive teams in the country. I think John Beck has played well. Now they have protected him uh, extremely well, but he, he, that last throw to Todd Watkins, they had it open. And it does seem that Cal, with the experience of a year ago playing against this style of offense, they faced Texas Tech unsuccessfully in the bowl game in the Holiday Bowl last year. They do seem to have a much better approach. And then you wonder about the approach last year. It's ancient history now. Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator, said, you know, we didn't play well. We're not going to do much different than we did last year. We just can't give up the big play. And that was really the first really big play they gave first up tonight. First one, Sean. I, I just said they're making tackles after the catch. They haven't given up a big run or a big pass play until Todd Watkins with that catch. First and 10 from the 11. They could get another first down at the one yard line. Under two minutes to go in the half. Each team with one timeout left now. They hand it off to the wide receiver, Nathan Nickel. And he's in trouble. There's a flag down. He's down at the line of scrimmage. Abu Ma'afala made the tackle. That drives you crazy if you're the coach at BYU. All the holding calls. Holding number 20. 10 yards remains first down. Daniel Coates, in the tight end with the 10th penalty of the half against the Cougars. You think about that all the penalties and coming out and not being ready, uh, focus early in this football game, still only down 14 7. Eight penalties per game. They've already surpassed that in one half. Nick. Flush to the right. Has some running room. He's across the 10. And out of bounds near the 5. Chased out by Desmond Bishop. 15-yard run by John Beck. Smart play by John Beck. Everything collapses. He runs to the outside. Has pretty good speed. He's impressive, Mike. We've only seen him on tape. You've seen him in person. I had only seen him on tape. And he is impressive. Good passer. Knows when to chuck it and to run with the football. Second and five from the six. Bahu Tahi. Down near the three. He'll bring up third down and two for a first down. Three for a touchdown. A lot of pushing and shoving here after the play. Donnie McCleskey pushed back by his teammates. He's a senior playing in his last game. The Cougar fans said, oh, We've got a lot of flags on us. How about one on them? Big play here. The clock is running. 45 seconds left in the half. And now a timeout called by Cal. And that is the final timeout of the half for Coach Tedford. 
And while they strategize, we'll return to the studio to Chris Fowler. All right, Sean, thank you. Robert Smith and Mark May join me on the Dodge halftime aboard. My two sidekicks here in a giving mood, I'm told. I'm in such a festive mood. Wait till halftime to find out the gifts I'm going to give away. And I'm going to be talking about that Florida State offensive line against that tough front seven of Penn State. And we'll ask Bobby Bowden if indeed his Knowles are a dangerous underdog against the Nittany Lions and that FedEx Orange Bowl. Coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report. It's back to you guys. All right, gentlemen, thank you. We'll look forward to that. We've been waiting patiently back there in the studio. This has been a long half. With five out of the six timeouts used, a long replay review, a lot of first downs to stop the clock. Robert Anai, the offensive coordinator, offensive lineman in 1984 when they won the national championship. What do you think you'll dial up here, Mike? Good good ball. The Tahi, the big back. He's lined up directly behind John Beck. Arlene, the tight end, the motion man. It is Tahi. It is a touchdown. Fahu <laughs> Tahi, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season, his ninth overall. We talk about how these players come and leave on missions and come back. He was their leading rusher in 1999. And as a freshman, he rushed for 445 yards. And then he went on a mission to Jacksonville, Florida. Redshirted after he came back from the mission in 2002. Wrapping up his career this year. Parents are from Tonga. The extra point good by Jared McLaughlin. And it's a tie game at 14. 38 seconds to go in the half. A 91 yard drive on seven plays. The big play, the 54 yard bomb to Watkins. They needed just 315 to go to 91 yards. Big offensive line of BYU. You talked about it, averaging 329. Opened up the hole for Tahi to run through. Nobody touched him. Well, what we expected, Mike, these two offenses moving the ball crisply. This is an exciting game, but the crowd's in it. Las, Las Vegas Bowl has done a fine job here. On Christmas Eve, the Nevada Wolfpack team, a little share of the WAC title, takes the field against one of the great stories of the year in college football. The Central Florida Golden Knights, George O'Leary's team went from 0 and 11 last season to the bowl game this year. The Sheridan Hawaii Bowl is part of ESPN Bowl Road Trip Saturday night at 8.30 Eastern. And if you haven't seen Nevada play, they have the pistol offense. Jeff Grohl, the quarterback, you'll like him. Marcus O'Keefe runs back the kickoff. And after a juggling start, he brings it all the way back across the 40 to the 42. Johnny Harleen, the starting tight end on special teams, made the tackle 38 yard return. And now, the kind of field position with which they'll try to get something done. Unfortunately for Steve Levy and the Bears, they have no timeouts. Yeah. No timeouts. You, you have a quarterback that's not an exceptional throw. Wouldn't be surprised if you try to get the ball to Deshaun Jackson. He's a kind of receiver you just hold your breath because if you're on the other sideline trying to defend him, he is good. Levy has time and throws, and it is incomplete. The pass interference is going to be the call. Quinn Gooch went over the back of David Gray. Gooch didn't think he did, but it's the 11th penalty of the night against BYU. 
Pass interference. Number 25 on the defense. 15 yards. First down. A lot of times in the bowl game, Sean, you get different conferences than you've had all year. That's a good call. And, but you, you, it takes time to get used to the officials. They call certain things different than certain areas of the country. Tom Schneider's longest fielder is 49 yards. There's virtually no wind in the stadium here tonight. Levy's throw is high over the head of Robert Jordan. Weather here has been spectacular for the whole week. Temperatures in the mid 60s every day, including today. That's about 10 degrees higher than the usual average temperature for this time of the year in Las Vegas. Supposed to cool off into the high 40s here tonight. There's Schneider, the sophomore field goal kicker. We haven't had many opportunities for him this year. There's Jackson. Levy after a long count. They blitz. Levy throws it deep, looking for Jordan. And it's over his head. Cale Buchanan in coverage. He had help from Quinn Gooch They're playing without Casey Bills in their secondary. He's out with a herniated disc in Bronco Mendenhall without a force in the middle of that defensive line. Manaya Brown would ordinarily start in the middle of the three man defensive front. He's out with a neck injury. He was second team all Mountain West Conference this year. Now, talking to the coaches before the game BYU they said Manaya Brown they really needed him in this football game. Couldn't play. He's been invited to some postseason All-Star games and likely won't be able to play in those either. Levy again throws. It is caught for a first down. Five seconds to go. It's a touchdown. Deshaun Jackson. BYU been able to tackle him it would have been interesting the clock would have stopped to move the chains but then they would have had to hurry to do something with no timeouts left Schneider adds the extra point the kickoff return really hurt Bronco Mendenhall's team he had to think if they could have just pinned them in a little bit deeper Cal with no timeouts probably wouldn't have even tried to score All right. When you see Deshaun Jackson, if you're coaching against him, you just hold your breath every time he goes for a route because he is so good, so fast, that it's very difficult to stop him one-on-one. -on -one. You almost have to double him. He has made an immediate impact. Yeah. First game of the year as a true freshman, Sacramento State, his first career catch went for a 31 yard touchdown and then his first career punt return in the same game went for a 49 yard touchdown and he was the MVP of the U.S. Army High School All-American game he's, they say he's a baseball player that someday could be in the big leagues and this guy has it all uh, Long Beach Poly High School in Southern California the kickoff will be down by Leon Jones. Take an E and go in. Yes. Go to the house. Try to figure out how you're going to stop Deshaun Jackson in the second half. And for Bronco Mendenhall, the game started poorly. And the half will end poorly. And the penalties have really hurt. Takes a year out of the stadium. Uh, BYU crowd was in this football game. They just got shocked here in the last 10 seconds. Now, this is a take and E. It's an interesting formation. They go to shotgun. The low throw incomplete looking for Matt Allen. And that is the end of the half. Should have taken the knee. Well as. 
we had thought the very entertaining half and plenty of offense. 35 points in the half between the two teams and the touchdown by Jackson with three seconds to go in the half the difference at the moment. Here's Alex Flanagan with Bronco Mendenhall. Coach with 35 seconds left on the clock you were tied in this game and then Cal goes and scores what happened. Uh, breakdown in coverage just uh, their player making a play and ours not uh, need more pressure on the quarterback on that particular call there's a lot of football left. 11 penalties that's uncharacteristic of your team how do you keep that from how do you cut down on that. In the we, need to we need to address it at halftime first of all that's the difference in the game in my opinion. What do you address at halftime. Execution and the mistakes. All right, Bronco, thank you. As usual, direct and to the point from Coach Mendenhall. Not happy. And with good reason, with 11 penalties. We're always happy when we get to listen to the insights of Chris Fowler, Mark May, and Robert Smith. And here they are with the Dodge Halftime Report. I'm just happy to get a break, Sean, but thank you. The ESPN Bowl road trip continues here at the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. First sellout in the history of this game, 40,053. They watched a wide open first half, 449 yards of total offense. And Cal leads for the third time in the game. Each time they took a one touchdown lead, BYU came back. BYU will get the ball first in the second half, and you almost expect the way it's going. They'll keep going up and down the field. Yeah, big play at halftime before the half. Deshaun Jackson making that catch, scoring the touchdown. But I think John Beck. And BYU John Beck has not been stopped. They they run the ball well and they're throwing the ball well. I expect John Beck to take this football team right down the field. David Loney kicks off. And the Australian booms one through the back of the end zone. Here's another Nikon game track. The first two touchdowns for Cal were scored by Marshawn Lynch. He's already at 74 yards rushing. He averages 117 per game. Oh, he tied the game at 14 and a big kickoff return with under a minute to go in the half. Put Cal in position to score the go-ahead touchdown with three seconds left on a 42-yard pass by Levy to Jackson. Now it's Beck who was 13 out of 20 for 169 yards in the first half with a play action pass on first down as a receiver and they're looking for a flag that will not come Matt Allen couldn't hang on he got up pleading for an interference call against Tim Mixon Tim Mixon right on top of Matt Allen held him a little bit out of the break should have been called. Definitely pass interference. Holding got away with both. There were 11 penalties called against BYU in the first half. Only three against Cal. This pro BYU crowd starting to get a little upset with the officials. Inside handoff to Curtis Brown. Six. Taken down by Desmond Bishop. As we look at the first half stats and as Bronco Mendenhall said when he talked with Alex Flanagan the big number for him the penalties two things Sean 11 penalties but field position own 16 yard line the two touchdown drives for BYU covered 91 and 92 yards Third down and four it's back again out of the shotgun. And the Bears blitz from their right. And the quick hitter beats the blitz for a first down to Johnny Harleen. That's his second catch of the night. Harrison Smith may have the tackle. It's a pickup of eight. When you're running back in a wide open offensive football team, you have to be able to block. Catch the football. Curtis Brown comes over and makes a good block for John Beck to deliver that football. Back with time again, throws short again for Curtis Brown. No catch. Anthony Felder in coverage. Same thing, Sean. When you have a running back like Curtis Brown, you have to block, you have to run the football, then you circle out of the backfield, you have to catch a pass against a linebacker. Yumpar really, I think, 
got in the way of Curtis Brown didn't see the football. Second and ten, Brown again. Brown the ball barrier. Hard earned six. Now to the 40 yard line, tackled by Anthony Felder and Desmond Bishop. Curtis Brown out of Paraclete High School, a Catholic school in Southern California. Once he got to BYU, he decided he wanted to convert. Said he was never very religiously active before he got to BYU. Impressed by the people he met, the impact that the LDS Church had on the lives of so many of his teammates and colleagues. And after researching and attending services, he decided he wanted to convert, become a member of the church. Back through the hands of Allen. He was wide open with a lot of running room, and the ball just whistled right through his hands. That's one as a quarterback. You want that ball back because you threw it too hard. You have Matt Allen wide open. Again, comes off the line of scrimmage. John Beck puts too much on the football. He knows it too. Knows he had an old wide open Matt Allen. Eric McLaughlin the punt. And Tim Nixon a dangerous return man back deep for Cal. Bad kick. Well you wonder if McLaughlin was hurt when he got roughed on the first kick of the night because he hasn't had a good one since. That one's out of bounds of the 35 yard line. Back at the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. First possession of the second half for Cal after a 26 yard punt. Steve Levy brings him right from the sideline over the ball. Marshawn Lynch, the running back. BYU blitzes. Lynch runs through it. And has a first down. Out to the 47 yard line, 12 yards on the run. Here's Alex Flanagan. Well, Sean Cal came out running the ball, but expect them to throw it a little bit more. You heard Coach Tedford tell me at the top of this game that he wasn't going to change his game plan just because his quarterback was making only his second career start. He told me they were going to cut it loose. Well, in the first half, they threw the ball nine times for 111 yards. Again, we'll expect them to do more in the second half. Tedford says he's very comfortable with how his quarterback is playing. Of course, Sean, one of his strengths is his leadership and poise. He's a very confident young man on the cocky way. Markel Staferi with the play. Help from Vince Fayula to drop Lynch for a loss back inside the 45 at the 44 yard line. Adding to what Alex reported, the secondary for BYU, not very stable. Had a lot of players missing in the secondary, so a lot of open receivers. Deshaun Jackson is a touchdown ready to happen. Well, it happened once. That's the big play of the game. The touchdown right before the half, three seconds to go. There he is again. Three and went the distance again. Spencer White, the last man with a chance to shove him out of bounds. It's a 20 yard gain. To Deshaun Jackson. He just can't stop him with one defensive back, Justin Robinson. He's so good, so fast. Good hands. BYU. Read about him for a long time. Southern California High School Player of the Year last year, selected by the Los Angeles Times, with 60 catches and 15 touchdowns at Long Beach Poly. Levy dumps it off short, and Chris Mandarino fell down. Short gain. They're going to mark the ball back at the 35, a pickup of two. The interesting what happens next year with the position at quarterback Cal Steve Levy says he's not thinking at all about that. He just wants to do his part to help them win the game but Nate Longshore was the starter at the beginning of this year he won the competition replacing Aaron Rodgers in three season broke his leg in the first game he'll be back Jay uh, Joe Ayu will also be back he started nine games after the injury Marshawn Lynch what an effort 
Touchdown! His third touchdown of the night, this one from 35 yards out. Well, the tackling has been less than splendid tonight for BYU. The extra point coming from Tom Schneider. And it is good. So Cal capitalizes on the poor punt. Special teams, another area of difficulty tonight for the BYU Cougars. Five plays, 65 yards, the final 35 from the fleet feet of Marshawn Lynch. It's the largest lead of the night for California. And here, Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Walt Disney Pictures, Glory Road, coming to theaters January 13th. And Nicorette Fresh Mint Gum. Start chewing, start quitting. Back to Las Vegas. Cal with its largest lead of the night. BYU has not led in the game. It's 28 14. Following the third touchdown of the night by Marshawn Lynch. He's now rushed for 118 yards, his seventh 100 yard game of the year. And he missed two games this season. Rayon Jones takes the knee. Again, less than ideal field position for BYU. Mike Bellotti, the Oregon coach, said. Marshawn Lynch doesn't think one guy can bring him down. And you see two guys here holding on for dear life. Marshawn Lynch, a powerful runner at 215. They're working on Marshawn on the sideline. Three wide receivers for BYU on first and 10. And the handoff to Fahu Tahi, and he's going nowhere. Brandon Meebane drives him back. Look at some of the adjustments BYU has made. See the offensive line not as big as splits here in the second half. So why would you change? Now they came out one play tried to run the ball now they're going to split out again they tried to go to tight splits and yeah. try to catch them and run the football widened out here on second down with 239 yards of offense in the first half back out of the shotgun on second down bumps it off the top here bounces off a couple of hits and goes down at the 23 right at the tackle to Tim Mixon a gain of five. Third down and seven upcoming. Cal's defensive backs, the best defensive backs I've saw all year was the four defensive backs of Penn State. This Cal defensive backfield probably as good as Penn State's. Curtis Brown the back now. Blitzes. The pass is caught by Johnny Harleen for a first down. Wrestled down by Harrison Smith. Seven more for BYU to move the chain. And that's a good job by John Beck getting rid of the football when the pressure's on, the blitz is on to find his tight end. John Beck said one of the things the players really appreciated this year. With the coaching change to Bronco Mendenhall was the return to these traditional uniforms. They wore with so much success on the playing field for so many years. John Beck said, I grew up cheering for that uniform, loving that helmet. His dad, when he was a young boy, painted him a BYU helmet, much, much like this one that they've worn for so many years. And it meant a lot to the players. He said, to a man, they 
appreciated the return to the traditional uniform. He talked about it early in the game when he was eight years old. His dad tried to fix the TV and the radio to get the BYU games. Dream big dreams. Now he's a quarterback for this team. And he and his dad used to drive from their home in Arizona up to San Diego to watch all those holiday bowls that the Cougars were fixed to in for so long. Mitchell found a seam in the defense, paid the price, but held on. Harrison Smith walloped him, but Nathan Mickle has a 12-yard gain and a first down. He's had a nice night. If John Beck finds the opening here, sprints out. Mickle works back to his quarterback. John Beck, Mickle stays on the run, finds a little opening, and makes a catch. Nickel, a tremendous student in addition to his football exploits, 3.85 grade point average at BYU. He's an ESPN the magazine, second team academic All-American. Six catches tonight. Beck airing it out deep looking for Matt Allen, who was well covered by Damian Hughes. Hughes, a first team all Pac-10 cornerback this year and a veteran tonight is 26th career start part of that secondary you like so much yeah he has four interceptions this year and uh, those corners now when you look at Mixon and Hughes they'll shut you down McCluskey and Harrison Smith two good safeties Hughes does damage after those interceptions too. Return the four of them for a total of 141 yards of returns and a touchdown. Bahu Tahi again can get started. No gain on the play. Tipped up by Fahim Abda Allah, the junior from Vallejo, California. Well done. <laughs> Another third down. This one third down and ten. And the clock ticking down to seven minutes left in the third quarter. California leading by 14. Beck's pass batted down and incomplete. He had a lot of time to throw it but couldn't find a man open. Zach Follett knocked it down. It'll be fourth down. John Beck, you have to like his feet. Oh, he's always moving his feet, trying to find a seam. Good coverage by Cal. The zone defense, everybody covered. And then a good defensive play by Follett, who's a freshman from Clovis, California. Lunchroom is back, blocking for the punt. You like to run in the end. They're coming after him. And a much better effort this time from McLaughlin. They have a chance to down it and do inside the five yard line. Ryan Keel there to down it. A 45 yard punt. California with a two touchdown lead more than midway through the third quarter. And they begin one of the few times tonight a poor field position at the four yard line. Marshawn Lynch. He's been running hard. But that terrific offensive line has done a very nice job for him all night long. That's a gain of 10 to get them quickly out of the hole. You're right about the offensive line. Marvin Phillip. It all starts there at the center spot. Big guy, 6'2", 305 pounds. This guy's one of the best centers in the country. Finalist for the Remington Trophy is the outstanding center in the country for the second year in a row. First team all Pac-10 center for the second year in a row. The teammates voted him the MVP of their offense. They almost got Lynch behind the line of scrimmage, and then he almost ran away again. Cale Buchanan managed to tackle him. Out of the 38 yard line, 24 yards on the run for Lynch. He might be heading for his career best night. His career high is 189 yards in a game. Marshawn Lynch and Ron Gold, the offensive 
running back coach. They play checkers. They put the starting offensive lineup on, then they call a play. He puts a defensive lineup in Marshall Lynch and then makes all the moves and blocks it all. Robert Jordan, the wide receiver, took the handoff and slipped at the 41 yard line. The gain of three. Here's Chris Fowler with a Sports Center 30 of 30 update. Sean, thank you. And for viewers just joining us, the sad holiday season story affecting Colts head coach Tony Dungy. His son, James, 18 years old, a recent high school graduate, a regular around the Colts facility the last few years, found by his girlfriend early this morning dead in his apartment in Tampa. And sheriff's officials are calling it an apparent suicide. Uh, not clear when Dungy will rejoin the team. In the meantime, assistant Jim Caldwell taking over the Colts play at Seattle on Saturday. Sports Center with more on this story after the game. Sean. Okay, Chris, thank you. Steve Levy's pass completed to Chris Mandarino, the fullback, for an 18 yard gain. And we credited Levy and Marshawn Lynch, the offensive line. Uh, we have to give credit to Jeff Tedford and the offensive coaching staff. This has been a very well prepared, with a very diverse game plan. About as well as you can call a game and affect the quarterback, Steve Levy, you're really helping him with the play calls. And whistles before the play. They have a freshman who's redshirting this year, Kyle Reed, another quarterback candidate who Jeff Tedford was Close raving about. Number 83, offense remains first down, five yards coming. So we'll have a lot to choose from. In spring practice, with Levy, AU, Longshore all back, Kyle Reed will be in the mix. You know what happens though with Levy? The team buys in. They start to believe in him. They start to believe it doesn't matter what kind of arm you have or what kind of running style you have. You're a leader. And Steve Levy is a leader, doesn't grab him. Throws out in the flat, a dangerous throw. It got to Deshaun Jackson. Again, terrible tackling by the Cougars. Jackson picks up some blocks. He's inside the 30 and spins out of bounds at the 22-yard line. 23-yard gain. When that ball was in the air, it looked like it might be picked off for a touchdown. But then uh, another missed tackle, and away they go for 23 more. I've seen a lot of receivers this year. This guy might be the best. Deshaun Jackson. His speed now, he's making BYU look bad. They're making the missed tackles, but Deshaun Jackson really has, he's fast. Five catches, 108 yards for Jackson. Tackling contributing to lots of yards after the catch for Cal. Levy has time. Levy going deep into the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown, Jackson. A little slow to get up. You just wonder if he knocked the wind out of himself on the hard landing. We leave you two men open in the end zone. That was a beautiful throw and catch. A good throw by Levy. Deshaun Jackson, no answer for him tonight for BYU. Well, you wonder if that's a catch, Mike, too. Landed on the ball. We have to see. It looked like the ball was sliding down his belly a bit as he hit the ground. And the play is being reviewed. At the, the first angle where we could, this angle, we could see the ball is the best. Yeah, I think that ball bounces down the ground and bounces back up into his stomach. I'm going to hold for one tonight, but I'm going to say that's an incompletion. It was ruled a catch, so there has to be conclusive proof. And one overturned already tonight in the replay booth. And the only review, formal review, that we are aware of tonight. 
A long uh, run for Gil Gelke, the referee, to go communicate with the replay decision maker. The uh, headset is all the way down on the 15 yard line at the other end. And underneath the stadium. Maybe he's just <laughs> going home. It's been a long game. Maybe Gill's had enough tonight. I've been right on these replays all year, but I'm 0 oh, for April excuse tonight. Me? I'm 0 for April. I said I. You were right on these replays all year? All year. All year I've been Could I perfect. Could I poll our crew and see if that's everybody yes, else's recollection? Can. Yes, you can. Go ahead. Uh, Storm, Producer Josh I, I Hoffman, our director, John Storm Speedo McDonough. He, he marks them all down. John McDonough does? Yes, he does. So you um, say incomplete pass. Incomplete and I agree pass, with you and we bring it back. Last time, and we were not in agreement with the replay well, official. So I have a feeling be he's right. going to rule it a catch. We could be right. Jack Vaughn could be wrong. Yes. I think the ball slides down his belly and hits the ground yeah. and then bounces back up. So you're saying incomplete pass I am. too. Okay. We're hundred percent. We're together. We're a team. After reviewing the play, the receiver has his arms under the ball, makes contact with the ground, maintains possession of the ball, touchdown. We're a team that's wrong. I still, you know, hey, I, he has his always, arms under the ball. The ball slides down through his arms and it looks like it hit the hey. ground to me, but we're off. We're having a bad night. Where Jack Vaughn is. Yeah. One of us, or both of us. Not good. So it's the second touchdown pass of the night for Levy. Second catch for Jackson. I think Jack waits for us to say what we're going to do. He goes different. Maybe he does hear us, and he knows we don't know much, so <laughs> if they think it was incomplete, it must be a catch. Regardless, a great effort by Jackson and now a 21 point lead for Cal. Riley. Largely a pro BYU crowd here tonight, but it's California that has scored on its last three possessions to take a three touchdown lead. David Loney with the kickoff. This one returnable for Breon Jones. And he brought it back to the 26 yard line. 23 yard return. Donnie McCleskey made the tackle. And now a lot of work to do for John Beck in the BYU offense. And take a look at the K Jewelers storylines. Beck's had a good night. Sean Jackson is an emerging star. And Marshawn Lynch is averaging 10 yards per carry. And John Beck's got his work cut out. Number 13 in the nation in total offense for Cougars at over 460 yards per game. Swing pass taken by Curtis Brown. He's taken down by Anthony Felder. And the clock runs under three and a half minutes to go in the third. That play is like a run where you just throw the ball out to Curtis Brown. It's like a running sweep. Good for a gain of two. Beck finds a seam to Johnny Harleen. For a first down out to the 38 yard line. Marlene grew up near BYU. His dad is a European history professor at Brigham Young University. Thomas Deku made the tackle. Option route where Johnny Harleen starts inside, hairpins outside, receives the ball from John Beck. Good route. He's an impressive tight end. Marlena's first team all conference in the non West. Beck had to throw on the move to his left and threw it at the feet of Curtis Brown. We talked about the splits. Sometimes when you go wide with the splits, you're inviting the defense to come take the A gap between the center and guard or the B gap between the guard and tackle. So all of a sudden they're firing linebackers through defensive line movement and BYU not able to pick it up. 
And in the wide splits, the tackle on the right, almost all the way out next to the wide receiver. On second and ten, that checks it down of Nathan Nickel trying to find some running room. They spin him ahead to the 43-yard line, about five yards short of the first down. Here's Chris Fowler. Sean, thank you. The Cougars in trouble, but their Mountain West Conference colleagues from Colorado State on Navy early here in San Diego. That's Corey Speary, the tight end, reaches behind and makes the catch down to the one-yard line. Well, Kyle Bell took it across, and the Rams an early lead in the inaugural poinsettia bowl. But Navy has just answered. Touchdown reception by Reggie Campbell, 7-7 on ESPN2, guys. And Chris, thank you. Two of the four bowl teams out of Mountain West in action tonight. Colorado State and BYU tied for second in the league this year. Curtis Brown the catch and the lunge for the first down. Out to midfield. Both the Cougars and Colorado State were five and three in conference play behind TCU, which was eight and zero in their first year in Mountain West. TCU will take on Iowa State in the Houston Bowl in Utah. The other bowl team out of Mountain West will take on Georgia Tech. In the Emerald Bowl, that TCU team is good. Yeah, no one really knew what to expect going in. BYU was picked sixth in the preseason conference poll, far exceeded those expectations. But Bronco Mendenhall thought they had a chance to be better than that pick, but he knew that the TCU was going to be very good. Yeah, almost beat them. Gary Patterson, the TCU head coach done a great job on the defensive side and running that football team Mike Schultz an offensive coordinator is going to be a head coach someday and he's very good too. You lost to them 51 50 in overtime on a very controversial play. It looked like TCU had fumbled in the overtime and lost the ball after BYU had already scored. In its possession of that same overtime, it would have been a BYU win. The officials ruled it a touchdown. Offside, number 52 of the defense, five yards, remains second down. Brandon Meebane with the penalty, the move ball to the 41, about a yard shy of the first down. And Carl Durrell said the UCLA coach, he said he gave me pain. Meebane, me pain. Played well against UCLA. Second and one. Beck looking to the sideline for help from Robert and I. You'd hate to burn the timeout on a second and one play. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Beck is looking deep. Now he's going to run with a lot of room. And he goes out of bounds at the 33 yard line. A gain of eight. And a first down. Looked like to me, Curtis Brown was being held downfield as John Beck was scrambling. Contact me. Maybe Curtis Brown was blocking downfield. Looked like uh, couldn't get away. See what happens here. John Beck with the pass. Curtis Brown open. Yeah, that's he gets grabbed. And it was already during the run. Six rushes for Beck for 39 yards. BYU on the move trying to get back in the football game here. Cal blitzes. It's dumped off short. And Nickel tackled immediately by Harrison Smith. That's the part of the football game tonight where Cal has won. Harrison Smith doesn't let receiver get away. Nickel. Well, their tackling's been much better, particularly in the secondary. And that's to be expected. They have a better secondary than BYU, particularly given the injuries on the BYU side in the defensive backfield. Eighth catch of the night for Mickle. They had nine in their season opener against Boston College. Arlene gives the stiff arm to Smith and fumbled out of bounds, fortunately for the Cougars. Ball will be spotted near the 17 yard line. An 11 yard gain Zach Follett the freshman knocked it out. It's the last play of the third quarter. A quarter dominated by California. The BYU is on the move as we head to the fourth.
Hope you and yours are enjoying this holiday season. Certainly the Cougars and Golden Bears have had a great time this week in Las Vegas. 21 straight points for California. You wonder, Mike, about the impact of that play right before the half. Mm. Cal scored on a long touchdown pass with three seconds to go in the half to break the tie, take the lead into the half, and it looked like a deflated BYU team in that third quarter. Changed the whole game, but if BYU could score here and somehow find a way to stop Cal, the running game, Amazing to this Sean delay Jackson. is that they were reviewing the video to spot the ball. It was the fumble you'll recall on the last play of the third quarter. It went out of bounds. The officials looked at the video and moved the ball back a few yards to the 21 yard line. First and 10. BYU in dire need of a score on this drive. As the fourth quarter begins, get back out of the shotgun and throwing in the direction of Todd Watkins out of bounds with a first down. Down to the seven yard line, Tim Mixon had the coverage. That's a 12 yard gain for BYU. And Todd Watkins has been quiet tonight. Cal, California has done a good job stopping the leading receiver of this BYU football team. This is a good throw on the break. Fourth catch of the night. First and goal from the seven. Nathan Nickel in motion. Curtis Brown. Made a pass popping after a one yard game. He ran into Desmond Bishop, the outstanding middle linebacker. Al's leading tackler for the season. Second team all pack 10. In his first year at Cal, he transferred in from. City College of San Francisco. He played in one of the best junior college programs in the country. Joe Ayub was his teammate and quarterback on that junior college club. He's led Cal in seven of the 11 games in tackles. And for a lateral to the tight end, Harleen. Nice play, beautifully executed, and a touchdown for the Cougars. Rushed up to the line of scrimmage, caught Cal not ready, threw the ball out quickly. Got a good block on the outside. But back in this. From our angle, it looked like a lateral, but that was a forward pass, a touchdown pass. Caught by Harleen, officially seven yards. Jared McLaughlin adds the extra point. And with a long way to go, most of the fourth quarter still remaining. BYU is back within two touchdowns. On the touchdown catch by Harleen, capping a 12 play, 74 yard drive that took four minutes and 34 seconds. Harleen is impressive too. Now, John Beck has found his tight end open all night. John Beck led the uh, drive here. BYU if they can get some defense now have a shot to get back in this football game they need their defense six catches for 68 yards and now a touchdown for Harleen We're looking at the thumb that appeared to Fahu Tahi on the sideline John Beck on the phone the quarterback coach is Brandon Dolman who was a standout quarterback at BYU just a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, Beck's 3,000 yard season this year, the first since Dolman threw for 3,000 in 2001. When you talk about programs with a history of great oh. quarterbacks, it's hard to surpass the great quarterback history and tradition at BYU. Big man, Detmer, Robbie Bosco, Steve Young. Steve Young. <laughs> Steve Young. McLaughlin's kickoff. Boy, he fielded it. It looked like it might go out of bounds. Marcus O'Keefe picked it up and made a nice return out to the 24 yard line. Harleen made the tackle. An 18 yard return. Another look at a Nikon game track. Been a wonderful night for Marshawn Lynch. And that was the highlight play of the night. The hard earned 35 yard run. Deshaun Jackson's had. 
two touchdown catches. And the most recent score by Harleen to make it a 14 point game. From the 23, first and 10. Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, he's averaging 10 yards a carry, and he's going to better that average. He refuses to go down. Justin Luke Garote and Paul Walkenhorst slow to get up after the play. Luke Garote, the primary tackler, but it's 15 yards, most of it just on effort by Lynch. And we've talked about the offensive line tonight when you have. O'Callahan and Ryan Mertz and Phillip and Robertson and Smith in the offensive line. That's what the BYU coaches said they had to match the nastiness and the toughness of this offensive line. On the 38, the BYU blitz, the bounce to the outside by Lynch. So this time they contain him pretty well. Cale Buchanan banged him out of bounds into the Cal bench. Marvin Phillip, Mike, you've talked about him, the center, one of the best in the country. He joined their program in 2000. He is himself a Mormon. Thought about going to BYU as a young boy, decided to go to Cal. He said, my mom made me go to Cal, the great education. Not that BYU is not an excellent academic institution, because it is. You thought he was holding on that. Oh, he was so. <laughs> But he came for one year in 2000 under the previous coaching staff, Tom Homo. Part of the three and eight year he left was not there for the one and ten season that followed and led to the dismissal of Homo. Here's Eric Keegan, the tight end. Again, brutal tackling. He was out of bounds along the far sideline. Markel Staffiri finally credited with the tackle, but. I know they're undermanned a little bit in the secondary, Mike, but just awful fundamentals, and it sometimes it seems like a lack of want to on the part of the BYU Cougars. I think you said it, that they have not been very good in the secondary. And Jeff, ten yards from the spot of the third. We play second down. There was a penalty. The referee's microphone was intermittent. And Marvin Phillip, Mike, he went away on the mission. He went to the uh, upper Midwest. He was in Minnesota, the Dakotas, Wyoming. While you're on the mission, you're only allowed to talk to home twice a year, Mother's Day and Christmas. Otherwise, you're out doing the church's work, performing acts of service, spreading the gospel. He didn't know until five months later that Tom Homo had been fired and Jeff Tedford was the new coach. Justin Forsett in it running back. Looks like he's a little short of the first down. TJ Sataki made the coverage. Jeff Tedford takes over. Phillip comes back from the mission. He arranges a meeting to go see Coach Tedford. Tedford knew Phillip was an excellent player coming back into his program. Phillip has two older brothers. They're bigger than he is. Marvin, when he left on the mission, was 300 pounds. He lost 50 pounds on the mission. His older brother walks in the room first. Jeff Tedford says, nice to meet you, Marvin. He said, no, I'm not Marvin. The next brother walks in, nice to meet you, Marvin. No, I'm not Marvin. They were both about 350 pounds. Marvin walks in about 250. And Tedford had a look on his face like, gee, I wish the other two guys <laughs> were Marvin. <laughs> but Marvin turned out to be a terrific player. One of his uh, brothers is a bodyguard for the Backstreet Boys. I know one of your favorite oh, musical okay. groups, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I know. Bodyguard. Third down and inches. They'll probably run right behind Phillip and his talented offensive line. To the right side here. Let's say we go this way. And it is a first down. Justin Forsett got just enough. Yeah. Excuse me, Steve Levy got just enough. Cameron Jensen made the tackle. Ball spotted at the 49 yard line. When you look at this offensive line, the senior Marvin Phillip in center, Aaron Mertz, right guard, 6'4", 340, a senior, and Ryan O'Callaghan, uh, as Jeff Tedford said, the best offensive lineman I've ever seen, 6'7", 360, on that right side. There's Justin Forsett in trouble. 
And they stop him at the line of scrimmage, perhaps a gain of one. Cameron Jensen, the general, as they call him, in the middle of that defense for BYU. The other thing I've seen about this game tonight, this has been a tough physical football game. Phillip holding his own here in the offensive line, but this has been a physical offensive line that will knock you down. Ryan Phillip is two cousins on the BYU team. Also Tonga and TJ Sataki. Now Sean Lynch back in. Cameron Jensen another tackle, but clearly here Mike Cal trying to run the ball and run the clock with a two touchdown lead and we're under 11 and a half minutes to go. Here's one of Phillips cousins TJ Sataki. We talk about how long some of these players are in the program Mike. He was a red shirt freshman Sataki at BYU in 1998. Wow. Long time. Played as a redshirt freshman in 99 and as a sophomore in 2000. Then he went on a church mission to Milwaukee and came back. And is now a senior. His brother Kalani was a fine fullback at BYU. Big third down play here. BYU trying to get the ball back. Lynch. And this time they do wrap him up for a loss back at the 49 yard line. Vince Fayula made the tackle. Steve Levy trying to stick his nose in to help with the block it thrown to the ground and it was almost after the whistle. Viola is playing instead of Manaya Brown so he has big shoes to fill. That was a big play for this defense. David Loney takes the ball game punt. David Loney to punt. For an academic first team all Pac-10 selection. They're doing Jingle American Lee. studies. He's from Australia. You have to have at least a 3.0 GPA to be academic all conference. Very high punt. And softly at the six and is down at the four yard line. Thomas Deku down to the 44 yard punt. Beautifully done by Loney. Welcome back to the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Sean McDonough, Mike Godfrey, and Alex Flanagan. BYU down by two touchdowns with the ball 9.59 to go. They're their own four yard line. They throw a quick pass to Johnny Harleen, the tight end. Reminiscent of the play they scored the touchdown on in their last play from scrimmage. They got seven to get them some working room. Harrison Smith, another tackle. It's a big play out of a wide receiver. Todd Watkins is that guy. They get big chunks. Harrison Smith has 12 tackles tonight for the Cal defense. He's almost the entire play clock. Back, throws short. Nathan Mickle breaks a tackle. And he's out to the 33 yard line. He has already had a 91 and a 92 yard touchdown drive tonight. They'll try to go 96. That play covered 22. First down. First time Cal has missed a tackle. And Mickel picks up good yards after the miss by Harrison Smith. Ninth catch for Mickle matching his season high at nine in the opener against Boston College. Out the gun again. Beck running for his life. Wants Brown to throw a block. And Beck gets shoved out of bounds and a flag thrown. Desmond Bishop gave him a shove right at the sideline and now tempers flare. BYU after 11 penalties in the first half has not been flagged here in the second half. I think Cal's going to get charged for a late hit out of bounds here. Interestingly it was an official about 15 yards away who threw it and not the official who was right there at the spot marking the ball. First goal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. Late hit out of bounds. 15 yards. First down. It was close. I think they might have had an argument either way. I'm going to say 
good call, but I'm 0 for 2 tonight. I think he was out of bounds when he got pushed. Yeah, he's clearly crossing the boundary anyway. Not a lot of room on these sidelines here at Sam Boyd Stadium. It's the home field for UNLV football. BYU played here earlier this year and hammered UNLV back in early November, 55 to 14. Tahu Tahi. To the 50 yard line. Actually a loss about a half yard on the play. Mika Kane made the tackle. Defensive lineman from Hawaii. Visual proof of just how little room there is along the sideline here. Great place to watch a football game. Great place, but on the sideline, you get trapped as a coach and a player. You can't get out of the way. Shotgun on second and 11. Little screen and Luke Ashworth, the true freshman, got lit up by fellow freshman Zach Follett. First catch of the night for Ashworth, and if they're all like this one, he won't be too eager to have another one. Well, this was a hit here. Follett was voted first team freshman All-American linebacker by Rivals.com. He had 29 tackles this year. He'll be a starter in years to come, playing behind some veterans this year. Third down and 10. Beck has his pass batted down and incomplete. Zach Follett again. A big play by Zach Follett. Again, to be in the face of John Beck. Looks like they're going to go for the first down, Mike. Down by two touchdowns midway through the fourth quarter. Offense still on the field for Bronco Mendenhall. Fourth down and a little over 10 yards to go. They, I'm sure they feel they can't stop Cal's offense anyway. They need this first down. They're one for one on fourth down tonight. Seven out of 15 for the year. Watkins has one-on-one -on -one coverage. The bottom of your screen to the right outside the pitcher. Beck has a man. It's a first down. Matt Allen wide open. Well beyond the first down marker. Loose coverage. Tim Mixon made the tackle 19 yards. And Hope is still alive in the BYU cheering section. Really the only call to go for the first down because you can't stop Cal's offense. Matt Allen pushes off, gets separation, open for the first down against Mixon. Allen is the cousin of Todd Heap, the outstanding tight end of the Baltimore Ravens. Matt Allen is an Eagle Scout, one of the 30 married players on the BYU team. Back, throwing it down a seam and a little too long for Matt Allen. Tim Nixon had much tighter coverage that time. We talked about Gary Croton, and uh, Gary Croton was the head football coach here at BYU. Bronco Mendenhall won a game on the road. He got home at about 2 a.m. in the morning. Got a call from Gary Croton, and Gary Croton congratulated him, and he really follows this football team. He wants them to do well. Shows a lot of class by Gary Croton. One of the players we talked to, BYU, so they had a lot of respect for Gary Croton. They were just disappointed it turned out the way it did. Three straight losing seasons and a lot of off the field problems. There's a formula to be dismissed. Curtis Brown the catch. It's another first down, down to the 20. BYU trying to drive and get within a touchdown with considerable time left. This drive started at their own four yard line. They've been able to drive the football all night. Still a lot of time on the clock. Five out of seven on this drive. Beck is thrown for 318 yards in the game. His 11th career game of 300 yards passing, seventh this year. Dumps it short. Nice move by Nickel. Boy, he's been impressive after the catch tonight. His 10th catch, a late flag thrown as well, likely a face mask. Personal foul. 
Great pass. Number 21 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Nathan Mickle going to see the face mask. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure we are. Donnie McCleskey, I think he's under the face yeah, mask. Looked like he had a jersey and shoulder pad. Who am I to say? <laughs> just looked like Nichols' head spun around. I think he had the shoulder pad. I think he did too. But instead, it's a walk off to the six. First down and goal. Six and a half minutes to go. Brown in trouble and dropped for a loss. Outstanding play by Ryan Foltz. The outside linebacker, fifth year senior, the only returning starter in the linebacker core. And he started only five games last year. They didn't have any other linebacker on the team who had ever started a game. You realize Ryan Coach, who made that play, was an all league volleyball player in high school. And his brother plays volleyball at Penn State on the varsity team. I knew you would do it, know that. Colts graduated already with a 3.6 GPA academic ball conference. Back to play action fake. Back to running out of time. Throws across his body deflected and incomplete. He's lucky to get away with that one. Desmond Bishop deflected it. Harleen the intended receiver. There's an injured player on the field. The Cal defensive player. I believe it's Abu Ma'afala it is number 43 so it gives both sides a chance to talk before a very important third down and goal play from the nine yard line. Coming up after the game it's Sports Center with Neil Everett and Stuart Scott. More details on the heartbreaking story the death of Tony Dungy's son. James Dungey at the age of 18. LeBron versus Jordan and a three peak for the Pats. More people thinking that's possible with the way the New Englanders are playing down the stretch. And that would be four out of five. Yeah. Five Our well. PAT yes, Pats, Pats, Pats can get it done for we New Englanders. Tom Brady is playing well. And, uh, they could make it. They could. What I've always wanted to do right now, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And the same to you, Mike. Yeah, you too, Sean, all the people listening. And, uh, bless our servicemen or women over the uh, seas and all over the country. And uh, God bless this great country of America. So, Amen. They're helping Ma'afala off. Servicemen, part of the uh, flyover we had here before the game tonight. Big play here. Third down and goal from just inside the 10. 13th play of the drive that began at their own four yard line. Harleen, the tight end. Split out to the right. They throw a fade for Harleen, and he couldn't quite catch it. Harrison Smith had the coverage. Been an excellent one on one battle and a decision for Coach Mendenhall. And it looks like they're going to go for the touchdown, down by two touchdowns, under six minutes to go. A good job defensively here. That's about it. as well as you can play it, Harrison Smith. Fourth better, down and goal. Better make sure they know where Harleen's at again. In the same spot. A two for two on fourth down tonight, including the big conversion at midfield earlier. Brown can catch the ball in the backfield. They're showing blitz. Beck stands in, throws. It's caught by Watkins. Looked like the defender had excellent position, and somehow the ball got through to Watkins. Tim Mixon, the defender, a nine yard touchdown, capping a 96 yard drive. Their third touchdown drive of the night of more yards. Well, a good throw by John Beck, a good catch by Watkins, and a lot of time on this clock. 
Jared McLaughlin to make it a seven point game. Right down the middle. 535 to go. 14 play drive. 96 yards on the road trip. It took four minutes and 24 seconds. And the senior Watkins with the touchdown. Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Pioneer, proud sponsor of the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Las Vegas, where no one knows what play you're going to run, only Vegas. And the all-new 2006 Jeep Commander, the most capable seven-passenger 4x4. It's your world. Take command. One touchdown game, five and a half minutes to go. And Jared McLaughlin fired up, booms a kickoff deep into the end zone, and Marcus O'Keefe will not run it out. The touchdown by Todd Watkins, capping another magnificent drive by BYU. And John Beck starts it off, scrambling, and then the penalty by Cal hitting him out of bounds. Fourth and ten, John Beck finds his running back brown open and then the touchdown Todd Watkins with a great catch and now the onus on the Cal offense looked like the last time they were in run out the clock mode you'd have to think here Mike they're thinking about scoring the way this yeah, BYU team is up and down the field tonight Marshawn Lynch the running back through a big hole. He almost broke free. 15 yards to the 35 yard line. Quinn Gooch, the safety, made the tackle. Boy, it depends what poison you want here. Got to stop the run. You got to stop the running back, Deshaun, Marshawn Lynch. But then on the outside, you got Deshaun Jackson. So you can't play him one on one. So you, you have to pick your poison here. Lynch limped off. He has 187 yards rushing about two yards shy of his career high, 189 of Oregon this year. Here's his backup, Justin Forsett. Quinn Gooch made the tackle. Not a bad backup. No. We talk about Forsett averaging eight yards per carry for the year. Here's Alex Flanagan. Hey, Sean, you and Mike are talking about BYU's trouble in their secondary. Well, they've further been hampered by the loss of Nate Solberg, their left quarterback. Sean, you mentioned earlier in the game that he uh, had at one point played with two casts. He broke a wrist on his left arm and an arm on his right arm. Just got the cast off his, uh, of his right arm and had been waiting and excited to play in this game. Has a strained lower back and likely won't play anymore tonight, Sean. Well, it is a loss. He's an outstanding athlete, a track athlete as well at BYU. Again, they can't get Lynch on the ground. Finally, they do. Look like Kyle Buchanan said enough of this. Kale Buchanan delivered the second hit that started the retreat of Lynch. And that'll bring up a very big third down play. We'll see where they spot it. It looks like it'll be the 42 yard line, and it'll be third down and three. Jeff Tedford's team has not trailed tonight under four minutes remaining play action pass by Steve Levy dumps it off and still on his feet is Eric Began looked like he was out of bounds along the far sideline looked like some of the Cougars stopped there is a flag on the play back at the 41 yard line. Justin Robinson finally got him out. Looked like his 48 foot was yards. Out of bounds. See what the penalty is here. Missed tackles by BYU again. They're bringing the ball back. Holding. Number four, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, but the play results in a first down. 
Well, good news and bad news for Cal. David Gray called for the hold because it was from the spot of the foul. It is a first down at the 49 yard line of Cal. With 3.41 to go. Here's a hold by Gray. Good call. Here's where you have to sell the farm to, on defense is stop the run. Now Sean Lynch. Haven't been able to stop him much tonight. He gets ridden out of bounds. You have to take a chance here. You have to load up the box. You got to lead to Sean Jackson one on one on the outside. Have to bring those linebackers up a safety. And try to stop Lynch. Nearly 900 yards of combined offense. Each team with all three timeouts left. Justin for set. Swithers for a first down. Down to the 37 yard line, tripped up by Spencer White. And this is exactly what Jeff Tedford had hoped for when they got the ball back. And now a timeout, I believe, has been called by BYU. It has. The first used by the Cougars. We'll return to Las Vegas in just a moment. Coming up on SportsCenter, how the Colts plan to rally around. 528, Cal with the ball and the lead. Three and a half to go. Two timeouts left for BYU. First and ten. For Cal, Justin Forsett three yards away after that last carry now from a thousand for the season. They got two and thousand yard rushers. Levy stumbled as he handed it off to Marshawn Lynch, who wisely goes down in bounds. Justin Robinson, the tackle, and a timeout. Again called by BYU. With 322 to go. That could have been catastrophic for Cal. And they had a malfunction at the junction on the handoff. <laughs> Quick timeout. Cal got penetration. Bronco Mendenhall selling out on defense now. Stop the run. It'll be second and ten. One timeout left, as we mentioned earlier. Bronco Mendenhall also coordinates the defense. He was a defensive coordinator at Oregon State at age 29. He's the youngest defensive coordinator in the history of the league. He said that uh, he didn't realize being the head coach took so much time. I don't think he'll be the D coordinator next year. I think he'll name somebody to that spot because you don't have the time. He said he thoroughly expected he was not going to get the job when the word was it was going to go to Kyle Whittingham. He said, matter of fact, my wife and I got our three young children together. They're all six years of age and under and said uh, kids be prepared to move because that is likely what we're looking at. He wound up the head coach led them to their first winning season in bowl game since 2001. And they have a lot of talent coming back next year. Second and ten. Lynch again runs into traffic behind the line gets away. They cannot get him on the ground. He stays in bounds. And turns it into a game to the 35 yard line. He picked up two and killed a lot of time. And he's slow to get up. Justin Maddox finally got him on the ground. Ben Gooch, Dustin Gabriel, Cameron Jensen. All with talented football team. A lot of skill. On Cal's team. Lynch has been up and down this field. Rushed for 194 yards and three touchdowns. BYU has used its last time out with 310 to go on a big third down play to come. Lynch has been one of many stars tonight. 
And he's only a sophomore. <laughs> From Oakland, California. He's already moved into the top 10 in career rushing yards at Cal. Did that tonight. He had 23 to move past Jackie Jensen. Better known as a, a baseball player. Baseball player never flew in an airplane. Always well, he did, took the train hated. to the game. Yes. Oh, he did fly in an airplane. He did. But he always was on the train, right? He is right his fielder. His career, I believe, was cut short with the Red, Red Sox, Sox because yeah. of his fear of flying. Zoan Olson, he was married to, right? Yeah, well, you might have me on no, that. I got you on that one. I finally got you on one with Boston. I wanted to know after the athletic tribute question what it was like when you coached against Pappy Walton no, no, back in no, 1949, no, didn't but you didn't give us any anecdotes. No. I wasn't there. Darren thought. <laughs> There's a big play for Jeff Tedford to the offense. I don't think they would try to uh, try a field goal here, Mike, if they're stopped here. It'd be more than a 50 yarder. You better make sure you keep Levy in the pocket because he's thrown that waggle pass and hit the fullback. Lynch is out of the game. Forsett is in. They keep it on the ground with Forsett. And he gets a yard or two. Uh, they'll mark him just shy of the 33 yard line. It would be a 50 yard field goal for Schneider. And the longest of his career is 49 yards. You could go for it on fourth down and about six, or you could uh, punt him in the corner. A lot of options here for Coach Tedford. One thing, uh, Jeff Tedford's going to use all this clock and yep. wait till it counts down and call a timeout. And that's what he's going to do. Sport Center coming up next with Stuart Scott and Neil Everett. Timeout. 226 to go. Believe one official threw a flag for delay a game. And Jeff Tedford said, wait a minute. We called a timeout. I think if that's the case, they might put a second or two back on the clock. Clock ran out. Kyle's timeout there first. They have two left. And while Jeff Tedford ponders this very important decision with a lot of options, Mike, I'd ask you, what would you do? Well, I'd be worried about even if I punt him in the end zone, BYU no timeouts, but they've driven the ball all the way down the field about three times tonight. I think I'd go for this, try to run some more clock off, try to get this first down. Put them away. And if you get the first down, it's pretty much yeah, ball over. game over. BYU's out of timeouts. If you kick a field goal, it's ball game over, but there's a lot of risk involved yeah. in that with a block. It's a low percentage field goal. And if you miss, you give them very good field position. Good leg. So I think they're going to go for the field goal. Is that because you see the kicker standing over yes, there? Yes, that's an <laughs> observa observation that uh, I just made. Now here comes Schneider. Now a lot of teams also have the uh, snap punt. it to the kicker yeah. and have him pooch punt, punt it down the, the field too. This would be a 50 yard try. Joe Ayub, who's the backup quarterback now, nine games started as the quarterback this year, is the holder. Schneider nine for 15 with a long of 49 this year. They are going to attempt it. And he didn't get enough of it. It's short by about five yards. Hope is still alive for Bronco Mendenhall and the BYU Cougars. 2.20 to go. No chance on this field goal. Just didn't hit it well enough. And BYU now with good field position. And momentum on the side of the Cougars. They've scored 14 straight points after Cal ran off 21 points in a row to take a three touchdown lead. No timeouts, but they have done more than 90 yards quickly three times tonight. Beck flushed, throws it to Curtis Brown. He gets a gain to the 40 and then gets out of bounds. He got seven. Here's Chris Fowler. 
Sean, thank you. Navy has jumped in front of Colorado State in the Poinsettia Bowl in San Diego. Marco Nelson will take the pitch and against one of the worst rush defenses in the country. Midshipmen get in the uh, house. They miss the PAT 13 10 over Colorado State on ESPN2. I think uh, Colorado State's 110th in rush defense. The Navy, very good running team. The pass is caught. And Nickel lunges for the first down. Wrapped up by Brandon Hampton, the reserve defensive back. Five yard gain. Clock stops to move the sticks. 2.06 to go. John Beck, impressive. Good throw. Knows when to run the football. Goes out of the gun. Swings it out quickly to Johnny Harleen. Nice tackle in the open field by Damian Hughes. Flag down on the play. Play yielded only about one yard. I believe this is going to be the first penalty of the second half against BYU after they were flagged 11 times in the first 30 minutes. Illegal block in the back, number one on the offense. 10 yards remains, first down. Please. Todd Watkins, the guilty party. <laughs> Gil Gelke said please, but then his microphone's not functioning here. I think he wants them to adjust the clock. But if they can't hear him, it's hard to follow the command. Thank you. There it is. Thank you. John Beck tonight, 34 completions. That is a Las Vegas Bowl record. 347 yards passing, also the bowl record. Throw short. Nathan Nichols spun out of bounds by Harrison Smith. 139 to go. Pick up four yards on the play. About five picked up on that play. And they need 15 more for a first down. Don't give that throw all night. Mickel with a six yard catch. They will not give them the deep ball. They're going to have to get a catch, then run after the catch, yards after the catch. Confusion. Beck gesturing Brown back and forth. He sets to the left of Beck. Four man rush. They got to Beck. It's deflected. It flutters through the air. It's intercepted by Damian Hughes. And he's chopped down at the 44-yard line, and that should seal it for Cal. Beck's arm was hit as he delivered the football, and it was a duck that floated through the air. Philip Mbaku. Put the hit on the arm of Beck. And an 18 yard return by Damian Hughes. It's happened twice tonight to John Beck. And now Steve Levy will take a knee. <laughs> well, a hard fought game throughout. Both teams play with great effort and it's going to be a nice ending of the season for Cal with the promise I think of better things to come next year an eight win year this year eight and four this stands as it should uh, with a pretty young team. I agree they're going to be in the top ten next year and uh, I moved them up from 20th to 10th tonight after seeing them. BYU season will end at six and six. A similar story, a talented young team, a lot of their key players back next year, including the quarterback Beck, the running back Brown, the tight end Harleen. Lots of great individual performances tonight, but the Capital One player of the game is Marshawn Lynch. 194 yards rushing and three touchdowns. A lot of guys, Sean. You could have picked two. I know. I, I agree with your pick. I didn't pick him. Oh, I was consulted on the you, pick by the committee in the truck. 
to Sean Jackson, too, Steve Levy, John Beck, and Harrison Smith on defense. The cow is all over the field. Steve Levy's 2 and 0 as the starter, and Jeff Tedford gets the Gatorade bath. The 14th Las Vegas Bowl. This year's version, the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Won by the California Golden Bears. They beat BYU 35 to 28. Sports Center comes your way next with Neil Everett and Stuart Scott. Now for Alex Flanagan, Mike Gottfried, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Sean McDonough saying good night and Merry Christmas, everyone, from Las Vegas, Nevada. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.